and welcome back to another unboxing review with Gizmo Slip Tech. Today we are to re today we're reviewing the Lenovo Lock 16 that costs $985 currently as of today. It's actually been about this price for a couple weeks now. Um, but you got to use the coupon codes in the video description down below. And if there are any updated coupon codes, I will have that on my laptop gaming sheet, which is also linked down below. Now, the Lenovo lock is Lenovo's super budget friendly. Um, the only, the only laptop from Lenovo's lineup that's a little bit more bun budget friendly is the Lenovo IdeaPad. But this is very much like a replacement, I think, for the Lenovo IdeaPad brand line. This is a new laptop for 2023. It is very similar in design to the Lenovo Legion Pro 5 series, but this is an all plastic build, but it has excellent specs for the money. This has better specs for the money than the Slim 5, but there's some aspects in which the Slim 5, I think, is a little bit more premium than the Lock because, like, for example, the Slim 5 has a metal back. This has all plastic built. So um, we are going to be comparing this Lenovo Lock against a bunch of the laptops today. We're going to review all of the top deals. We're going to unbox this bad boy. We're going to check the quality control. We're going to disassemble the laptop, look for upgradability, see how hard it is to upgrade stuff on the inside as well as take it apart. Analyze and review the ports, check the camera quality, see if it has Windows Hello, I don't think it does. Test keyboard and mouse, display brightness, color gamut, and contrast. Uh, we're gonna look at the Lenovo Vantage software, teach you how to use it. Uh, we're gonna do a speaker test with a decibel meter, fan noise testing with a decibel meter, see how loud the laptop is. We're gonna do some benchmarks, and then we're gonna play a bunch of games, including Baldur's Gate 3, which is, one of the most popular games right now, and I have played quite a few hours of Baldur's Gate 3 on the Lenovo Lock 16, about four or five hours of Baldur's Gate 3 action. Um, on the Lock, I've been using it for my gaming experience lately, and it's been very good. So uh, what's up? I see people in chat are popping off, so let's go ahead and dive into our top deals and value comparison with the Lenovo Lock 16. So if you have not seen this sheet, this is a, uh, a website that lithium.com. Uh, I've got all of the very best deals that you can get in gaming laptops here at the top of the list. Uh, and then of course we have all the other laptops in here, including the most premium ones, the most portable ones, all of that. Uh, and we have it marked if they're on sale, regular price, uh, or out of stock. So you can easily sort through and figure out uh, look for any laptop of a specific size, GPU type, uh, weight, or performance level. We even have benchmarks in here for CPU and GPU performance. And these are, uh, if they have actual numbers to them, then they are final numbers from a real benchmark. Uh, and if they are rounded to the 100th, that means they are an estimated number. So just keep that in mind. Some of these are estimated, but they should give you pretty close to the ballpark performance, probably within a few hundred points of the final result. Obviously, depending on which fan profile and how you're running the laptop and how optimized it is. Okay, so uh, let's review the laptop that we're actually looking at today, the Lenovo Lock 16 with a Ryzen 7 7840HS. That means we have a Zen 4 CPU in here, eight core 16 thread, RTX 4060. This is a full wattage RTX 4060. It goes up to at least the 95 to 105 watt range in typical gaming workloads, which is basically the max performance for an RTX 4060. 16 gigs of DDR5, 5600 RAM, one terabyte SSD, which is a great value at $985. There are very few laptops under $1,000 that come with a one terabyte SSD and 16 gigs of DDR5, and the RAM that it is coming with is actually 5600. Um, a lot of the RAM that you get in the cheaper laptops, as you'll see when we, as we do this comparison, is either slower RAM or only eight gigs of RAM, um, though I don't typically recommend the eight gig of RAM units as much. So, uh, hold on one second. All right. So this has a full HD plus 144 hertz, 350 nits display, uh, but it is a very low color gamut display at 45% NTSC. But 350 nits 
rated by Lenovo is very bright for a under $1,000 laptop display. Uh, I believe this is the same display that's in the Slim 5. If you did not see that review, I did a review on the Slim 5 very recently, and it, it was a very promising laptop in many, many ways, though uh, the key differences between the Slim 5 that I reviewed and this one is that the Slim 5 only had a Ryzen 5 CPU with six cores, 12 threads. This has eight cores, 16 threads, which is a crucial difference, um, as well as I believe faster RAM and a bigger SSD. And this one's actually technically a little bit cheaper at $984.99 or $985. So overall, Lenovo Lock, at least with these specs, provides excellent bang for the buck and great value. That said, there are some really juicy deals right now on the internet for gaming laptops in 2023. So let's talk. Uh, let's talk for a moment. I'm going to kind of make this a little separate mini video that I can post on the channel, but... Let's talk about the best deals right now in August 2023 that you can buy in out of any gaming laptop, period. Uh, and there are some insane deals right now, so uh, we're going to go through them. Uh, we're going to talk about all... We're going to talk about most of these, not quite all of them. Um, but this is the 2023 gaming laptop list, and there's a link in the description down below to check this out. Uh, and every one of these listings, you can click to expand it and... Uh, you can look at uh, the pictures, you can look at links here, and there are some benchmarks and summaries of each of the laptops right here. All right, so uh, MSI Bravo 15, this is a laptop that has a terrible display, or not terrible, but very poor display, I would say, it's like a four or five out of 10 in terms of rating. It's 144 hertz, which is good, much better than a 60 hertz display, but there is some ghosting, it's not very colorful, it's not very bright, um, but, it's got an RTX 4050, latest gen, fourth RTX 4050 for $749. This is the cheapest 4050 we've seen so far, and it's tremendous value, bang for the buck. If you just need to play games at 1080p, this will play almost every game at 1080p, most likely with ultra settings, uh, and maybe disabling ray tracing in certain titles or, or turning down textures in certain titles. Only six gigs of VRAM on this, but, uh, I would say the Bravo 15 is primarily attractive if you're a very strict budget and you're like, I gotta get something for less than 800 with tax, then this is a good option. Um, and primarily I'd recommend using an external display with the Bravo 15. Now, uh, we got the Asus Tough A16. I did a review, detailed unboxing review of the Asus Tough A16, $799. It is on sale big time right now, $300 off of its normal price. And this thing is faster than an RTX 4050 in raw GPU performance, typically. Now, my review of this had the CPU temps going kind of crazy, uh, but that's mainly because we set the CPU power sliders all the way to max. Uh, we did do some more testing with the Asus Tough A16 when we turned the CPU power sliders down and changed the performance profiles and stuff. We had some pretty dang good uh, performance. That said, RTX 4000 series has frame generation. Frame generation is a game changer for single player games that does, I think, give you a lot more performance for your money. But at $799, this thing definitely gives the RTX 4050 laptops a run for the money, in particular because the display on this is much better quality than most of the $700, $800 laptops out there. Uh, this has 100% sRGB coverage, very colorful, over 300 nits brightness, full HD 165 hertz. So if you're an eSports gamer on a budget at $799, this is probably the best eSports gaming laptop that you can get at $799. It's an eight core, 16 thread part, and it's an AMD GPU. I, like I said, links in the description to this if you wanna check it out. Uh, this is the Lenovo Lock 16 with an RTX 4050, $835. It may, if you're on a tighter budget, this is probably a worthy upgrade from that MSI Bravo 15. Uh, up to you, but, uh, but yeah, the display quality on this is gonna be quite a bit brighter. Not really more colorful, it's the same color gamut as the Bravo 15, but it's gonna be a brighter display. Only eight gigs of RAM on here is the main downside. You'll wanna upgrade that, obviously it's a Ryzen 5 as well. Acer Nitro 5, I did a review of this one. This one has uh, really good thermals, really good performance, and the display is better than the Bravo 15, but not as good as the lock. 849 for an RTX 4050. Uh, 16 gigs of RAM here is a big bonus. 
Uh, and very minimal ghosting. I thought this was a pretty good deal. I wouldn't say this is an amazing deal, but it is, I think, worthy of being in the top deals in August 2023. Lenovo IdeaPad Gaming 3. Oh, we're on the wrong. We got to go through this. I thought it was going to be doing it in the right order. Okay. Oh, it is. Okay. Good, good, good. We are still good. Okay, so Lenovo, I don't know, this one needs to be removed from the top deals. I wouldn't recommend this one currently. Uh, Asus Tough F15, bonker deal today. RTX 4060 version, 899. RTX 4070 version, $1,000. $1,000 for an RTX 4070 with a great display, one terabyte SSD, but the downsides here, you're getting a 12th gen CPU, but it's a good 12th gen, i7, 12700H, so it's not one of the cut down uh, i5s, and you get 16 gigs of RAM, but it's only DDR4 3200, but typically speaking, that's still very good RAM, and you'll still get very good gaming performance out of it. Um, overall, at 999, this is the best deal in gaming laptops that I have seen so far in 2023. Look at this, $12.21, Sense for our GPU performance per dollar. That is the highest we have ever seen so far in 2023. So uh, if you're after an excellent deal, the Asus Tough F15 is a definitely better deal than the Lock 16. You get a more colorful display, RTX 4070. All of that said, the Asus Tough F15, this thing's not gonna be a 999 for very long. It's definitely gonna sell out extremely quickly and there'll be limited stock for sure on this. Uh, I really like this laptop. I did a full review of this laptop. It had good, good all around thermals, good performance. It feels really nice in the hand. I really like that laptop a lot. Okay, so um, what other laptops are worth talking about for the best deals in 2023? Well, you have the Lock 15 for $9.99, very similar to the Lock 16, but it's a 16 by nine aspect ratio instead of 16 by 10 aspect ratio. Just a little bit smaller, very, very similar uh, overall display quality and specs for the money. So if you want 16 by nine instead of 16 by 10, I guess this is the laptop to go for instead of the lock 16. And then uh, we also have the Acer Predator Helios Neo, which is $200 off. And if you're after a really bright display, this is the brightest display under $1,000 that we've seen so far. Uh, currently, I believe it's over 400 nits brightness, full HD 165 Hertz, but it's only an RTX 4050 here. So uh, you're definitely paying a little bit. You're shifting some of your money from the GPU and CPU focused over to the display focus, uh, though it's just not as colorful of a display, but still, if you're in a lot of in bright environments, um, then this is gonna certainly be more visible in an outdoor environment. And there was no ghosting on display. And the i5 CPU on that thing is an HX, which gives it pretty much as much cores as the i7 12700H, I believe. It's, it's a lot, it's more cores than your typical i5. Um, the only other deal that I think I really wanna talk about is if you wanna step up uh, your display quality and you're a Lenovo fan, you got the Lenovo Legion Pro 5 uh, with a QHD 165 hertz, 300 nits display, $1,127 for that guy. You also have the Acer Nitro 5 with a QHD 165 hertz, 300 nits display, but it's 100% of the P3 color gamut. So if you're after a more colorful display, for video editing, Photoshop, all of that. And this also has a 3070 Ti, which is a more powerful GPU in raw GPU performance compared to the RTX 4050, 4060, and is very competitive with a 4070 um, in terms of raw GPU performance. Uh, and it's a lot of value, one terabyte SSD and 16 gigs of DDR5 for $9.99. This is actually, uh, it was a little bit cheaper, but now it's $30 more. You also have the Acer Nitro 16 with a 4070 QHD 165 Hertz, 500 nits display. Again, if you're focusing primarily on display brightness, then this thing is very bright. I don't think it actually tested quite to 500 nits. I believe it tested a bit under like 430 or something. I did an unboxing review of this. It's actually $100 cheaper right now than it was when I reviewed it for 1349. So super banger deal again. 
um, for an RTX 4070, but it's not as good of a banger deal as this Tough F15 with a 4070. So the Tough F15, just absolutely crushing it in terms of best value deal right now in August 2023. Omen 17, also a very good deal for a 4080, an i7 13700HX, 16 gigs of DDR5, QHD 240 hertz, 300 nits display for 1929. So if you're looking for a little bit more expensive laptop with great value, you've got the Omen 17 there. You also have the Legion Pro 7i for an i9. If you're looking for a more powerful processor, you get the i9 13900HX and an RTX 4080. And honestly, this display is really good, but it's not quite 100% P3 color gamut. So it's in that sense, it's not as good. The, the Omen 17 is also not, but uh, right now it is only a minor sale on the Legion Pro 7i. And I would wait for this to go on sale a little bit more, like say 2100, 2200, uh, before you pull the trigger on this RTX 4080 version of the Pro 7i. Um, but yeah, it's still just, it's very good deal in the 4080 category. Okay, so that's all of the deals and the primary competitors as well for the Lenovo Lock 16. Uh, let me go ahead and pop back over to chat. Uh, gentlemen, please like. Pump, pump, nice. Okay, Zinc says, really nice that the lock is 350 nits considering low end trends seem to be 250, 300. Uh, yeah, very bright display for the money here. And honestly, I'm expecting the Lenovo Lock 16 to go cheaper in terms of pricing as the year goes on. I could see Black Friday deals bringing this thing down to like 950 or 900. Um, and uh, yeah, because we're already seeing just prices come down on gaming laptops uh, in the last six months quite a bit. And this deal for the Lock 16 has been around for a while. Now, I think it's a good deal at 9.85. I still think that's a very good deal, I believe. But we got to do all the testing and verify that uh, this thing doesn't have any major problems like thermal issues um, or any other glaring weaknesses or flaws, and which we'll be doing thorough testing today. So I'm really excited. Let's go ahead and get into the unboxing portion. I also want to just, again, point out we're going to do all of these tests today. At least that's the goal. Um, so as long as everything goes well, we'll try to get through everything. Um, okay. What is the TDP of the Lock 16? It should be right around uh, 95 to 105, which is the maximum TDP of an RTX 4060. Even though some of them say 140, it doesn't really matter because the laptop, no RTX 4060 I've tested this year ever goes up to 140 ever. Like it rarely goes over 105 in any gameplay. Occasionally in extremely GPU bound games, you might see 110 for a moment, but typically most RTX 4060s this year are right around the 95 to 100 watts in typical gameplay, give or take maybe five watts. So that's what I'm expecting to see in the Log 16 today. Uh, but we'll be we'll be looking at that. We'll be making sure that we're getting the full value out of the RTX 4060 today. Um, so yeah, without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and pop right into the Lenovo Lock 16 unboxing. So here is the box. You can see we've got the Lenovo Lock right here, Lenovo's logo over here. It's a very plain and simple box. Um, and this was the external box that was shipped to me. Very, very minimal, um, very minimal defensive protection from mail, I would say. Okay, so all right, popping this open, you can see we got a foam container or a foam uh, bumper, basically, that the laptop's inside of. And we also have our power adapter. It's popping out at the same time as the laptop. So there's that, and we'll go ahead and back this up a little bit. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at the power adapter first. So there you can see it's a 230 watt power adapter from Lenovo. And it's a pretty basic one, pretty small overall in size, but it's, I guess it's more like medium in size. It's not too small. It's a, it's good size for a 230 watt. Okay. It's not, it's not extremely large, 
which is great to see. Um, too many laptops this year have kind of a super large power adapter. All right, uh, now let's go ahead and see how long the cable is. Notice you do have this nice uh, Velcro wrapping. All right, so there's that. And we're gonna pull this back. Huacha. All right, and so we got about a six foot long power adapter cable. And then the power cable itself is also about six feet long, which is great. So that gives us a very long reach when you are needing to plug this guy in. I love to see that. All right, looks like we got a couple of documents that the laptop came with. Um, Lenovo Lock Series. All right. There's a little getting started guide right there. Overview, camera, touchpad, power button, microphone, camera switch. You can disable the camera with a switch on the side of the laptop. You've got an audio combo jack, multi-purpose USB-C, power connector, a lot of ports on the back. And then there you go. Let's go ahead and look at this real quick. Safety information for the lock 16. Not really much point in looking at this too much. Don't suffocate yourself on the plastic bag. Basically is what it says. All right, so there is the laptop. You can see it's got a nice foam container. I mean, I don't think the laptop is gonna take damage uh, unless the outer box is punctured. Um, so, yeah. But it's, it's certainly a super basic unboxing here today. All right, and then we also have the plastic wrapping. Voila. You can see the laptop right there. And uh, there's the bottom. That's what the bottom looks like. You can see the ventilation right here. Got a decent amount of air ventilation for the intakes on the two fans here. I believe there's two fans because there's exhausts on all sides of the laptop. So I'm assuming there's two fans. Um, I have not opened the laptop up yet, but almost every la every Lenovo laptop we've tested so far this year has two fans. Get the most from your PC with Lenovo services. You can upgrade your extended warranty for 15% off if you'd like right here. Um, and I, I did have a good experience when I needed warranty support uh, with my Legion 7i a couple years ago. That said, I have heard some bad support experiences with every single brand. I would say in general though, Lenovo has above average warranty support for their product. Okay, so here is the laptop you can see We've got this uh, plastic top deck with a nice texturized finish. Let's go ahead and just do a quick feel around on the keyboard here. And nothing feels out of place. No keys feel loose. Touchpad feels good. It is a plastic touchpad, as you'd expect. Lenovo went with basically all plastic touchpads this year. Um, but this keyboard layout is exactly the same keyboard that we get on almost all of the Lenovo products this year. It feels the same uh, typing wise as any other uh, Lenovo Slim 5, Lenovo Pro 5, and the Legion Pro 7i that I have reviewed so far this year. Uh, we do have a fairly minimal bezel design along the laptop, but the biggest bezel, of course, is the bottom here. Um, Honor Can says, hello for, from Sweden. I'm looking for the perfect 14-inch gaming laptop. I played Dota 2 and Warzone 2. Which one do you recommend? Lenovo Yoga Pro 9 or the Asus G14? Uh, yeah, you're going to probably, like the, the Asus Zephyrus G14 um, 
Probably RTX 4060 version is probably gonna suit you just perfect for Dota 2 and Warzone 2. That would probably be my recommendation. The Lenovo Yoga Pro 9 is uh, the, the Yoga Book uh, 9i that I reviewed is gonna be good, but only if you're doing clouds, cloud services and uh, cloud-based services won't be as good for esports games. Dota 2 and Warzone 2 being esports games, you know, they're gonna have a lot of input legs. So thank you so much for your support. I appreciate it. Uh, Ali says, hello, Gizmo. I have to say thank you for all the consistently providing excellent reviews for all these new laptops. No problem. I'm happy to do it. I'm happy to be helpful. I'm making this my career, so, uh, so I'm focusing on right now. I'm really enjoying reviewing laptops, and I have always pretty much reviewed enjoying laptop for many, many years now. Okay, so we got the lock logo here on the back. Normally, a lot of Lenovo laptops have Legion here, and it's kind of like a holographic shimmery thing on the back. Not the case with the lock series. This is kind of like a matte look on a semi shimmery plastic back. So this is plastic. This is not metal. It does feel strong-ish. I don't think it's going to break on you, but it doesn't feel as premium and quite as durable as a metal display would. Now, uh, you can see we've got this, this uh, hinge design with two stand-up hinges here on the back. Let's go ahead and move the hin uh, hinge back and forth. Um, can you open it with one finger? Yes, you can. And there is quite a bit of wobble with the laptop when you move it. Uh, that said, you can move the laptop display almost all the way back, not quite, that's as far as it goes. Um, the hinge design here, as far as I can tell, it's more of a budgety hinge design compared to some of the uh, more expensive laptops. That said, it's very standard for a $1,000 laptop, and as long as the applications inside the hinges are done well, I think the hinge will last a long time. Um, so, so yeah, all plastic build on this guy. There's nothing metal as far as I can tell. Um, and that's, like I said, this thing is the replacement for the, uh, basically the Lenovo IdeaPad series, though they're still making the IdeaPad series, uh, at least so far. But I think they're gonna transition to this series in future generations. So overall, uh, for a budget laptop, this thing feels good. Most importantly, when you have the laptop open like this, it looks just like a Legion Pro 5, Slim 5, or Legion Pro 7i in terms of look, uh, except for the RGB, of course, which we're gonna do a detailed breakdown of the RGB and all the changes you can make to customize it and all of that. So uh, let's go ahead and do a flex test. Well, we got the laptop open here. So going around the laptop, we got some bend here, just a little bit of bend, a little bit of bend, a little bit of flex little bit of flex, about average amount of flex, but uh, certainly some flex there on the laptop. Uh, coming around the side over here, you know, usually the corners are very strong. Uh, an acceptable amount of flex for a budget laptop, I would say, but I would say the, the Slim 5 Pro 5 and 7i are a little bit more rigid, especially through the middle here. Um, but uh, not a huge difference. I wouldn't say it's a huge difference. Um, and in terms of torquing the display, yeah, I think, I mean, it's, it, it feels like a solid budget laptop in my opinion, with no major problems or qualms about the build. Um, okay. Very nice. Uh, Bebop says, nice plug for the tough F15-4070. I had mine for a month and I love it based off your recommendation. Cool, man. That's great. I'm glad. Uh, I mean, I really liked it back when I bought it. Uh, you know, we did a review of it. I still have mine. I probably, I don't, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. I might have to sell it here. Uh, I'm actually, if it's still within the re return period, I'll probably try to price match it for $1,000 and maybe keep it so I can do comparison reviews with it. That thing is... That thing was very impressive. Anyway, let's uh, let's move on. Let's go ahead and take the bottom of the lock 16 off now. Okay, so we're gonna use the uh, iFixit toolkit, which uh, has all of these handy dandy tools for taking the laptop apart. There's a link in the description if you wanna pick one of these up. Um, it's a very nice kind of professional toolkit for taking laptops apart. A bit overkill if you only need to take a laptop apart every now and then. I'm sure there are some nice budget options out there that can save you some money. 
um, if you don't want to spend as much for an official iFixit toolkit version. Uh, but this one's really nice, rotating rear and magnetic screw head with all of these prying tools that you'll need. Um, it, I mean, obviously, I'm very glad I spent the money on it because I open a ton of laptops. I've done like 50 this year already. It's kind of crazy how many I've done. Um, so yeah, I'm very, I'm very happy with my investment uh, in the toolkit. Uh, so there are a lot of little screws and I wanna point out that there are different sized screws here. So it's very important when you put the laptop back together to put the right screw in the right hole or you're not gonna have a good time. You know, we're teaching all kinds of life lessons here at Gizmo Slip Tack. You know, putting things in the right hole is very important. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay, moving on. Let's try, I'm trying to take away from there. That's kind of hard to do. We're moving on. We're still taking these things apart. Uh, so, there it is. Uh, looks like all of the rear screws are the same size, uh, and then the front four screws are shorter. Now, if you put a long screw through a short hole, you're probably going to go through the motherboard or something else important, maybe embed a long screw into the battery, for example. So you want to make sure you put the correct screw in the right hole. Okay, now, let's go ahead and pry this thing apart. I don't know if we need to take anything off of the back here this is interesting I, I i honestly i have no idea i've never taken this laptop apart but it looks to me like there are two screws here in the back panel and i'm not sure how this is going to go oh, we're going to figure it out we might have to google it i don't want to break anything obviously um I recommend using something like a guitar pick at first until you get it to pop up initially. There we go. We got a nice pop up going now. Let's go ahead and just take this all the way down to the front. We'll go up the side. Doesn't want to come up. Obviously be gentle and use plastic pry tools here so you don't break anything. Now, this is where it's gonna get interesting. I'm not sure how this rear is gonna come off because everything's coming up except the back of the device right now. I'm not sure if you can see that. Uh, I'm guessing this might slide into the back. All right. It's not coming up. So this is an intriguing laptop design. It's very nice cooling system. We got a nice battery in there. That's as far as we're gonna get with this unboxing today. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah. Okay, so I'm guessing that this end cap pops off is what I'm guessing. So we're gonna try. We're gonna try to just pry this thing off. Oh, look at that. It came off just like that. I just guessed and it guessed correctly. So the end cap pops off. All right. And now we can remove the bottom the rest of the way. All right. Uh, this thing does not want to come up. Oh, there are additional screws. There are additional screws underneath the black thing here in the back. We're gonna need to take those out before we can take this off. So if you try to force it, you're not gonna have a good time. So, not sure if you can see it, but there are basically two screws 
one on either side of the end piece and they are the longer style screw. All right, so now it's coming up, no problem. Oh, and there's another screw, there's a third one. All right, so a third screw in the back. And there it is. All right, we got the bottom free. A little bit of extra steps required. Also, Into the AM has awesome shirts. Link in the description for 10% off. Go check them out. A lot of the shirts I wear on the streams here are from Into the AM. And if you do use the link, it does help support me as a content creator. So thank you very much. Uh, Freemote says, LOL. Uh, it helps you to appreciate all of the little things. Yes, that will help you. Appreciating the little things will help you in all aspects of life. Um, okay. Ooh, interesting. We got some blue paint on the inside here. Let me go ahead and reposition my uh, tool kit here real quick. Out of the way. And that way I can scoot this up closer there we go and there we go and just slide some screws around i don't want to lose any screws here beautiful okay okay so here it is the internals of the Lenovo Lock 16. First of all, we can see we have a huge bay here that's kind of open. Um, and that's because this laptop may have different battery sizes, uh, depending on which one you get it with. I'm not sure, but this is obviously capable of housing a bigger watt hour battery. This one is a 60 watt hour battery. So, um, if that is the case, you may literally be able to buy a bigger battery and upgrade it with this laptop. Hard to say for sure. Um, all right, moving on to the next bit. We've got our Wi-Fi card right here. I am not seeing a brand name. It says made in China, but there is no brand name. Just like the Legion Slim 5. Here's our memory. We've got a shroud over the memory. Uh, we've got our battery power plug right here. You'll want to take that out typically if you're going to upgrade your laptop. Uh, and for, as far as upgrading the SSD space goes, we have one empty M.2 slot right here. And we got one fulfilled M.2 slot right here, but it's only a half size, uh, like a, tw was it a 2230 instead of 2280. So know that if you're going to upgrade your SSD, um, that you may you may need to get like additional uh, cooling tape or whatever underneath it, uh, like thermal pad or whatever, um, if you want to thermal pad the bottom of it at least. And uh, But yeah, there's already mounting brackets built in for a 2280 large size SSD. Um, you just switch the screw from here to over here and probably undo the screw mount that's there, like un unscrew that. Now, looks like that if you want to put an SSD in this side, you have to do a 2280. You can't do the short one because there's no mounting bracket in the middle there. Uh, we do have memory here. I am going to try to take this shroud off. Wow, that was a lot easier to take the shroud off than it usually is. Gotta love that. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at that RAM. We've got Samsung 8 gig 1RX 16 PC5 5600 RAM. So uh, Samsung based RAM. I try to hold it a little bit closer so you can see it a little better in case you want to order new RAM with the exact same specs or whatever. So there it is. You can pause the stream if you want to look at that. Um, cool. Now I would urge you to be careful with the shroud. This is a metal shroud and arguably the biggest reason that you have for unplugging the battery. So 
Yeah. Yeah, normally I would recommend unplugging the battery before messing with the shroud there, okay, but I got the shroud put on back successfully, just flipped it around, and it kind of clipped in right there. Looks like, uh, let's take a closer look at that SSD. Very tiny little guy right there. I will hold it closer for you to see. And it is a K-I-Q-X-I-A, is that a QXIA? QXIA Corporation brand one terabyte SSD. Uh, we'll have to see how well that performs today, see if we run into issues with it being a half size, but typically speaking, I don't think it will. Uh, almost all SSDs uh, perform quite well, uh, at least for gaming workloads. All right, here is the thermal solution. We've got two large fans. All right, so we've got two large fans here, here with two large shared heat pipes. Uh, actually, three large shared heat pipes, but two going across the back and one shared going across the CPU and GPU and coming around to this fan over here. So very interesting three heat pipe design. We got the GPU over here with the VRMs being cooled, the AMD GPU or the AMD CPU right here uh, with the three, um, and we got three heat pipes on there. So given the fact that we have three shared heat pipes and everything uh, covers both the CPU and GPU, we're talking about a laptop where the CPU temps are gonna affect the GPU temps and the GPU temps are gonna affect the CPU temps. Um, but in particular, I like having shared heat pipes because it will allow the laptop to distribute heat uh, in a CPU only workload and a GPU only workload. So that way you get the best cooling depending on the type of workload you're dealing with. Um, so overall, I like the internal design. Um, another thing to note, note and point out is the speakers here are very small. Like we're gonna have a budget level audio here, small level speakers not very high quality, not very large. I don't expect to have high volume um, or very good clarity on this laptop speaker. So 60 watt hour battery, upgradable RAM, two SSD slots. It's your standard um, laptop upgradability for 2023. Uh, no glaring issues or problems other than the fact that I wish they maybe included a larger battery here because uh, there's a lot of open space. They could have just made the laptop smaller if they had designed it a little bit tighter. Obviously, uh, designing a laptop and making it tighter is also going to increase cost for that laptop as well. So that's why they did not do that. Um, and that's partially why this laptop is so inexpensive. But that's why I appreciate, uh, I appreciate the laptops that are more premium and really tightly designed on the inside where there's basically no room wasted at all. Uh, and you do occasionally run into those kinds of laptops. Uh, well, often you do when they're more expensive. That's the primary time you run into them. But Razer laptops in particular are extremely tightly designed. Um, and that's obviously a pro and a con. It makes it a little bit harder to keep the laptop cool, um, especially for the money. But uh, that's partially why Razer laptops are so expensive. And this one is very inexpensive. Um, so, so, yeah. All right. And our last whole screw for the rear is right here. And it kind of feels like something may not be popped back together. I need to go look at this. I think, I think it's all popped back together. Uh, it's just not super rigid. You know, this being a more budgety build. So there's the back going back on there. Uh, no problem, that snapped back together very easily and nicely. How does this compare to thin and lights with a 4060? Uh, well, like for example, the Zephyrus G14 is another very tightly compacted uh, laptop, you know, 
because this one is a larger laptop with a 16 inch display, that just makes it easier, right? That makes it easier for a cooling solution that's a little bit larger, it doesn't need to be a vapor chamber, it can just be heat pipes. The heat pipes can be thicker. Um, and uh, I just, I think my primary criticism of the internal part of the laptop is that if they had just shifted some things around, I think they could have made the laptop a little bit, uh, like the bezel a little bit smaller or the uh, battery a bit bigger or, uh, you know, they obviously could have included more, more higher quality speakers. Uh, but again, these are things that you pay for when you get the more premium versions of the laptop. And you don't get those things when you're going for the low end, you know, more entry level laptop. You're getting all of the basic stuff, like the basic speakers, the basic webcam, the basic hard drive. Okay, so this corner is not popped in. There we go. And we got two more screws left. And the laptop will be all back together. Does this one have a SATA slot? No, it does not. Even though, see, that's another thing. If they had shifted it around, they could have included a SATA slot in that open area, but it wasn't quite wide enough for a two and a half inch drive. And there was no connector on the motherboard either, uh, as far as I could tell. Okay. Like the, the Lenovo IdeaPad does have a SATA slot. Uh, at least in some of the idea pads. So that's a nice thing for them to use that extra space, um, you know, for a more budget oriented person because the two and a half inch drives can, you can get like another one terabyte SSD for like 20 bucks or not SSD, but two and a half inch HDD for like 20 bucks. Okay, so there's the, uh, the bottom of the laptop. There's taking it apart. It was fairly easy, no major problems. Just gotta, it's a, a little bit tricky. You just gotta undo the back and then you pull the back off and then you have three more screws underneath this black piece in the back. All right, so let's talk about ports on this guy, all right? So I wanna pull up the technical specs document and I wanna make sure we get all the specs to the right port, ports on here. All right, so on the left, we have one USB-C with DisplayPort 1.4 support, uh, and it's 140 watts USB-C charging. We have a combo audio jack as well. So nice, nice port functionality over here. Of course, being a Ryzen uh, system, we're not going to have uh, we're not going to have Thunderbolt support. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the back of the device. On the back, we have two USB-A, I believe 3.2 Gen 2s, HDMI 2.1, our power port, and then our Ethernet port. So here's our USB-As. Uh, it's kind of a shame that uh, we don't have a USB-C on the back, the USB-C being on the left side, and there's only one USB-C on this unit. Uh, it's kind of a bummer. And of course, this is the power port over here on the right side. I'm gonna try to get the, the light in a little bit better position if I can to light these ports up a little better. There we go. And let's go ahead and get a focus on them. There we are. So there's the two USB-A 3.2 Gen 2s. LAN port, a downward facing. You're gonna have to lift the laptop up to pull that off. HDMI 2.1 for very high quality display outputs to like a 4K 120 Hertz display. And then you've got your um, power port right here, about the same size as a USB-A, so don't get confused and plug your USB-A into there or try to force it into there. On the right side, we have another USB-A and the the uh, camera shutter button. So this is a USB-A 3.2 Gen 1, um, and it might actually be USB 2.0, according to this. I, I am not sure if that's... Do, do, do. Let's go over to Lenovo's official website here and check, see if they have the official ports. There we go. Uh, so 
number two here is a USB-A 2.0. So this is not USB 3. This is USB-A. This is USB-A 2.0. This is what you put your mouse into. All right. So if you're if you're plugging your mouse into any of these ports, this is the one to put a slower, lower bandwidth, low power requirements, because the the back ones can put out more power and have way better data throughput. So you'll want to put your um, mouse input here and then the multifunctionality devices over here on the back or the USB-C over here on the right. Okay, so there you go. There's your port selection overview. Uh, the ports on this, there's only four total USBs. I wish there was a one more USB-C on here. And I wish the USB-A 2.0 was a 3.2. That gives it more functionality. And of course, there's no Thunderbolt 4 support or USB 4 support. And there's also no mini display port, no full SD card slot or mini SD card slot. So overall, the ports on here are like a 7 out of 10. Not terrible. You get Most people will be able to plug in all the things they need to plug in. Um, and if you're going to use a dock, you're probably going to want to use a USB-C dock of some kind uh, because that's going to give you your best throughput, your best data, the most data throughput and the best power output. And you can, of course, power the laptop as well through here. So if you don't want to take the large power brick and you have a USB-C power charger, you can use this to do like 60, 100 or 100 and up to 140 watts of USB-C power charging. Um, so there you go. Not uh, not the best ports, but not bad either. Um, also, I'm not sure, but it looks like we might have a minor scratch on the top of the device already. Yeah, I would expect this device to get little minor scratches on it because this does not appear to be coming off. And all I did was rotate the laptop on an empty wooden table. As far as I know, it's empty. There's nothing on this table, so. Um, yeah, definitely something to keep in mind. Uh, if you want to keep a laptop looking spiffy, you might consider a skin you can put on the laptop and make it look a lot different as well at the same time. All right, so. Let's go ahead and get the laptop plugged in and powered on. There it's coming on. One thing that is a little bit fancier, one thing that's a little bit fancier about this laptop than the Pro 7i, status indicator light for when the laptop's plugged in. Look at that, it goes red. I think it turns white as well when it's fully charged, I think. Okay, so laptop is fully set up. Let me go ahead and put the pin in. All right, and Voila, there is the lock 16. Let's go ahead and uh, evaluate what's our next thing. We've done ports, disassembly. Let's check the webcam quality and see how good the webcam is. All right, so let's go ahead and do a picture. All right, smile. All right, let's go ahead and see what we got for quality here. All right, so we definitely have some, some decent detail in the hairs, but it is a lot of noise as well. We can clearly read the Lumix logo on the camera, which is good. A lot of the webcams um, this year cannot, you cannot read it or it's very muddled looking, but it's very clearly outlined letters here. Um, overall, for a budget laptop, that is a above average webcam quality. I'm not gonna say it's amazing by any means, but that's not bad. I mean, this will. Uh, this is certainly, yeah, I mean, the colors are meh, but yeah, you could certainly, I, I, this one looks the best. It looks like it did some color correcting. And these ones, my face is a bit reddish looking. Um, it doesn't look as quite as reddish when I look at the screen. 
with my eyes, though. Uh, overall, uh, I'd say it's a 6.5 out of 10 in terms of webcam quality. There's a lot of room to grow still, but, uh, but yeah, not, not as bad as some of the laptops this year. All right, so, and just to verify, we don't have, uh, oh, hello, Windows, hello. There is no Windows Hello camera option available. So don't expect to have Windows Hello. All right. And let's go ahead and move on to our next test. Let's go ahead and look at the keyboard and mouse and in detail, as well as look at any backlighting options that this laptop might have. Uh, and you can see here in the software, there is no keyboard backlight options because as far as I can tell, it's just a white keyboard. Um, and if you wanna control your backlight, what you do, is you do FN plus spacebar. You can see there are two levels of brightness and right now it's at the brightest. Uh, and this looks good. Honestly, I don't think you really need a brighter keyboard than this. And the Slim 5 did have a multicolor keyboard, but the brightness on that was not that great. And for the money, this honestly might be more noticeable in terms of backlighting, which is weird. Given that it's a white keyboard only, I think it's pretty interesting. Uh, the keyboard layout itself is your standard Lenovo keyboard. Let's go ahead and take a detailed look at the keyboard itself. And also we'll turn the lights dim here so you can see the keyboard backlight and see what it looks like um, a little bit more in detail. So go ahead and zoom in here on the keyboard. There we go. All right. so. On the left side here, we have a FN lock. So if you use FN plus escape key, it'll have it'll light this up. Now it's lit up. Now it's off. Um, but if you if you do light it up, that means all of these secondary functions along the top will be active. So I can mute and play and and do all of this without having to hold FN and press it. Now if you uh, want to use the F2 functionality, you actually have to use FN and press it in order to activate your F2 button now. So that's the downside. It's, I don't know, I I, I do prefer the quick access functions, being able to adjust the brightness, especially the volume and pause, pause play. Uh, over here we have pause play and fast forward. So I like being able to touch those buttons at, at a quick glance if you want to pause play, mute your music or whatever um, without having to do the whole FN reach thing. Almost all of the FN keys, I usually use the FN, uh, F2 or F4, which I can do the Alt FN, F2, Alt F, uh, Alt F4, FN combination if I need to exit a program or whatever, so that's fine. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and go over all the keys. We've got mute, volume down, volume up, microphone mute, brightness down, brightness up, monitor, Display switch. So if you want to switch to an external display, that's the button. Then we've got airplane mode. Uh, this is your Lenovo Star Smart Lenovo Smart Key. Lenovo Smart Key is what this is. Uh, you can use it to quickly launch uh, Lenovo applications and services. So you, I'm sure you could set this up to um, switch between. Uh, different key apps like Lenovo Vantage or Lenovo Arena. There you go. So these are the two applications you can switch between. Uh, oh, it looks like you can add more. So you could do a Windows Explorer, Microsoft Edge, Microsoft Word. So you can add your own custom app in here to, to launch whatever application you want as well. So that's nice. Uh, I don't know how many people are going to do that. Uh, Touchpad disable enable for F10. Uh, and then this is your multi-switch window button from inside of Windows, like alt tabbing, basically holding alt tab. Calculator launch for F12. Insert has nothing, print screen, delete key. And then at the right side over here uh, with, the, with the full size number pad, you got your home end, page up, page down with your pause, stop, 
rewind and fast forward track buttons. Uh, and then of course you have the number pad and notice how clean the backlight is on this unit. There is, you can easily see everything with the backlight. It looks super good in my opinion um, and much better than mini laptop backlights. The main downside here is that it's just one color white. All right. Um, yeah. And it, yeah, like in some ways this is better than the Slim 5 because I think the white light here is brighter than the multicolor RGB light that they use in the Slim 5, but you just don't have the multiple colors. So it's kind of up to you. Honestly, I think I would prefer this in my laptop for the backlight because it's brighter. Makes it a little easier uh, to notice at night. And yeah, it just doesn't quite have the RGB gamery stylish look to it. Um, you can see we have nice... Uh, keyboard rests on the left and right sides, and these should stay very cool in the mid middle of work, uh, doing workloads because we have, um, let me go ahead and turn the lights back on over here. Uh, these should stay very cool in the middle of work be workloads because all of the hot components are along the back of the laptop. There's, you know, the GPU and CPU are located in the rear, um, and so the fronts should stay nice and reasonable temperature wise. And I, I do like the keyboard layout, the way the number pad is laid out and the arrow keys are separated away from the keyboard. This I think should be the standard uh, default keyboard layout for most laptops, at least overall. Um, touchpad wise, this is a plastic touchpad, but it still feels pretty good. Um, it's gonna be very similar to your Legion Pro 7i touchpad, honestly. Uh, which is kind of funny, but basically Lenovo went for all plastic touchpads this year and they pretty much all feel the same. So that's nice in the sense that the Lock 16 is getting a good touchpad. It's just the main downside to getting the plastic touchpad, this surface does not feel as good as the glass touchpad that you get in the more premium Asus laptops or uh, MSI, Razer, all those other brands, Alienware, they're all using glass touchpads on their nicer units. Uh, that said, many of the budget models don't use glass touch pads and they're just plastic. And so for, as far as this, comparing this to most other plastic, comparing this to most other plastic touch pads, this one is pretty nice. Uh, it's a little bit smoother feeling in my opinion than most plastic touch pads. Um, but yeah, definitely plastic and yeah, it works just fine as far as using the mouse. That's really what you need a, a touch pad for though, right? Um, we do have RTX stickers and Ryzen 7 stickers right here. And now I believe we're ready to move on to our display test. Yes, we are indeed. Uh, I have the Legion Pro 5, 3060 Ryzen 7, 5800H, still going strong after two years. That's awesome, man. Uh, yeah, it should, that should still be a great gaming laptop for 1080p gaming. Uh, I just have to turn settings down in certain games. Um, okay. Display test. Let's go ahead and grab the Spider 5 Elite and get it plugged in. Now remember, when I'm plugging this in, I have to plug this in to the back of the laptop because the front of the laptop, the USB-A in the front is quite slow. Right, and here is my, there's that, and let me see, can I grab this? Do I have the USB in here? I do not, okay. All right. We just gotta put in our Spider 5 Elite code here. Look it up real quick. Uh, while I'm doing this, I do want to thank all of you who have been supporting me as a content creator. It really does mean a lot to me. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, and if you want to continue supporting me, there is a membership on the channel. You click the join button next to my name. 
Another way to support me as a content creator is just to use the links in the description down below or on my gaming laptop list. Uh, and you got to use it with a browser where uh, ad tracking or browser tracking is enabled, at least temporarily, um, when you're buying the laptop so that uh, basically it can credit me as the content creator that directed you towards that laptop. Uh, and that does help, you know, basically some of the links down, not all the links, but a lot of the links in the description uh, are affiliate links, which basically help support me as a content creator financially and my team as well that, uh, that help me manage the list. Um, I've got six people working for me now. Uh, most of them, are, they're all part-time, but th th we got quite the team going now. And I, I am really uh, appreciate, I appreciate them and I gotta, you know, gotta pay the bills. So I just wanna make sure you guys know how to support me. Uh, and of course there's always super chats as well. You can support me through super chats, uh, but no pressure. Just watching, this, watching the videos is supporting me, subscribing, liking the channel. That's the easiest, cheapest way to support me. So I invite you to like, subscribe, all of that good stuff. Thank you so much. All right. So, oh, yeah, we are at 100% brightness. We are measuring the display color gamut. I can see with my own eyes right here that this display is not as colorful as a lot of the displays I've tested this year, but it's also very bright. I can see that it's bright. Like it, you know, as it switches between the different colors, I can tell that it's bright. It doesn't also, it also doesn't seem super contrasty to me as well. We'll have to see what the contrast is. Maybe the contrast will surprise me. Um, that does get very dark on the dark side. Um, Overall, I'm not anticipating too much about this display. You know, this is more of a budget-oriented laptop, so I don't think we're going to see a super high-end display here. We already know Lenovo claims 350 nits brightness with uh, only 45% NTSC, which translates to like around 69% of sRGB. So that's what I'm anticipating for our display stats. Hopefully we can match those estimated stats today. The Slim 5, which I think has a very similar display to this, maybe even the exact same model, had uh, a, what was it, 324 nits brightness, I believe. So we'll see, we'll see. Like honestly, the Slim 5 display seemed a little better to my eyes. I don't know, uh, I don't know exactly why, if it was the contrast uh, or, or what, but I don't know if it was the exact same. Uh, okay. Tino Goldschnitt says, never saw the stream hit over 100 viewers. Oh, wow. We got 145 people on right now. Thank you so much. Um, I didn't even realize that so many people were on right now. <laughs> I don't focus on that. I just try to make a good live stream. I don't even look at the viewer numbers. Um, okay. Chimney says, should I buy the Ryzen model or Intel model with the 4060 GPU? I, I think both are, are great. The Intel CPUs, the Ryzen CPUs, the, I, I've had good gaming performance and good all-around performance with both Intel and Ryzen this year. I think it's primarily, um, I think one of the main advantages for Intel would be Intel QuickSync. Uh, and then the primary advantage for Ryzen is probably just that it's a, a, a smaller nanometer process, which gives it a little better battery life. Um, and potentially in theory, better temps at lower wattages, lower wattage pulls in gaming loads. Um, but that's only true when you tune it correctly. So anyway, all right, so let's go ahead and move into the evaluation of the display. And yeah, you can see we're only getting 61% of sRGB, 45% of Adobe and P3. Now keep in mind, this display checker that I check with is seven to eight percent underestimating the value compared to most display checkers out there. That's just a nature of the Spider 5 Elite. That's what that's true when I check it versus almost all other displays. That's just for the color gamut though. Uh, so yeah, I'm anticipating this is right around 68 to 69 percent sRGB, right where we were expecting that to be, and that is on the lower side. That is definitely a downside of this laptop when you compare it to some of the competition like the Asus Tough F15 that has 100% sRGB, right? 
Uh, let's go ahead and see the brightness. 312 nits brightness. Uh, I guess 313. So that's also not quite as bright as the Slim 5, which I believe that measured at 325 uh, nits brightness. So overall, we're over 300 nits brightness, but we're not hitting 350 like Lenovo claims. That's a little bit disappointing. Yeah, I think I, I wish we were hitting closer to 350. Um, as long as we're over 300, then we're at least going to be able to see the laptop display in, in moderately bright environments. But in broad daylight, it's going to be pretty hard to see this display. Um, and then obviously, because of the lower color gamut display, we're not going to see as many colors in our video games or especially in any kind of professional content, video editing, Photoshop. I do, I really, I really would recommend at least a hundred percent sRGB display. If you're going to do baseline levels of Photoshop, video editing, stuff like that. Um, so, but if you're a casual gamer on a budget, this display is at least hitting the 300 nits range for minimum specs uh for i guess like that's that's basically kind of a huge cutoff for a lot of people they want to have at least 300 nits so they can see the games they're playing right now the contrast ratio was 1060 to one which is actually better than i thought it was going to be um and that's a little bit above average compared to many laptop displays but i can tell this thing is not as colorful um or as vibrant as some of the other uh laptops out there let's go ahead and do a quick example uh test with this lg oled display video sample piece go ahead and mute that and let's go ahead and zoom in okay so there it is. I mean, you can see that, I mean, you're gonna be able to play your games. You're gonna be able to see the content uh, just fine, you know, but it's just not gonna be as vibrant looking because of the lower color gamut. That's clearly, I, to me, the biggest weakness of the display. I really wish Lenovo included more like a 90 to 100% sRGB screen because only around 69% is pretty low. Um, but that's, that's what you get when you're saving money, right? So we're going to close this. There we go. All right, cool. Um, let's do, before we move on, I would like us to do a backlight bleed test. So Overall, like if you're curious about the best gaming laptops for the money, I did a whole top deal section um, for comparing the best uh, laptops for the money already uh, at the first, like the first section of the stream after the intro. So if you're looking for potential alternatives, please at least check that section of the video out as well. Let me go ahead and turn off some lights. And we're looking for backlight bleed right now. We're gonna turn off all of these front facing lights. And we gotta turn this off too. There we go. All right. Um, yeah. So I'm seeing very minimal backlight bleed. There's almost no backlight bleed on this unit. Uh, a little bit on the bottom left over here. I'll turn this last light off as well, but I don't think that's gonna change anything. Almost no backlight bleed on this unit. Let's see here. Look at it straight on as well. You really gotta look at it directly straight on. Some in the bottom, some in the bottom right over here as well. So there's a little bit over here and a little bit over here. Almost nothing along the top or backs or any other area of uh, the display. Overall, very impressive, minimal backlight bleed. Uh, but if you don't have display color gamut, backlight bleed is not as that important anyway. <laughs> uh, Chinmay says uh, display can also be changed by optimizing it on the Lenovo website. That's a great 
uh, potential pointing out. Let's see what that looks like. I don't know if that's I, I like at least if you're trying to go through the official Lenovo website here. I don't think there's any customization on the Lock 16. With some of the other laptops, that is true. But this deal that we're talking about today is a built-in screen into the deal, so there's no there's no changing that. All right. Um, all right. Let's move on to our next phase, which is going to be evaluating laptop control software. All right, so this is a bit controversial uh, in the sense that some of the other laptops really have crappy control software, and Lenovo actually does a really good job with the Lenovo Vantage, uh, typically speaking. Occasionally, you run into bugs, but uh, Lenovo has been very good about adding features, updating their, uh, their computer, uh, and keeping it, I guess, working reliably is what I would say. Um, all right, so this is what this is kind of the home screen dashboard. If you need to update your BIOS, um, go here for system update. You can adjust macro keys, you can set your power. And the main thing I would say in here is you probably want to set um, your battery capacity, activate this conservation mode. You can just click this on and it will charge your lithium ion battery up to only 75 to 80%, which will help your laptop battery last a lot longer. Um, so highly recommended to do that. Uh, there's a few other smart settings you can change, like under audio here, we've got uh, microphone mute. Under display and camera, you can enable privacy mode. You can adjust your brightness and contrast and enable auto exposure or disable that. Um, and then you've got your F1 through 12 or special function key switch right here, the FN lock button. You can also change your keyboard backlight right here. And under advanced settings, there's just microphone noise canceling. Uh, so let's go ahead and go back to our main dashboard. Uh, Nahimic is our audio control software and you can enable or disable this. I recommend just enabling at least the effects, keep it on probably music uh, and then just do treble bass. You can do voice. This is kind of like your mids. This is your lows and this is your highs. Um, if you want to boost those a little bit and typically speaking, I think it's a little bit better to do that. Um, yeah, if you do volume stabilizer, that can also help bring up some lows uh, around you if you're like in some games and uh, maybe help you hear footsteps. Um, yeah. All right. Um, yeah, so the primary controls for this laptop are over here on the right. You have thermal mode, you can do performance, balance with AI, quiet mode or custom mode. Now performance is just a great all around setting. You can leave this on, it'll ramp the laptop fans when the fans need to go uh, to keep the laptop cool and it will run the CPU and GPU on the higher levels of performance. Um, all right, so very good. Uh, it's a very good option is performance mode under general. If you don't care about fan noise, if you want quieter fans, like medium noise fans, typically balance mode is the way to go. The, the whole Legion AI engine has not done anything for me. Uh, I haven't done super detailed testing with it, but in general, it's not really, it's nothing to brag about or write home about. Um, and you can, you can fiddle with it, turn it on and off. It might give you a few more FPS in certain games uh, that the AI knows are CPU bound or GPU bound or something like that. But generally speaking, it's not gonna make a huge difference. Um, going to performance mode or custom mode is the way to get the most performance out of this laptop, typically. Quiet mode is going to really lower your power limits uh, and your fan noise to almost completely silent. We'll be testing this here in a moment. Custom mode is also a way to set your fans to either full speed or custom. You can do your own custom fan profile curve here. Um, and of course, basically what this means is that when the laptop is at X temp, it will ramp the, the fans to be so loud. So if you want them to be full speed, even when the fans are like the temps aren't maximum, you can do it like this, where the fans will jump up to 100% when the temperatures reach a certain threshold. And you can see when you is it when you hover it? Yeah, when you hover it, you can see um, 
you can see that uh, when the G when the CPU temp is 76, the GPU temp is 70, the fans will reach 5200 RPM. Um, if you lower this down, you can see that the fans will only reach 2700 RPM. So uh, you can use this, or you can switch it. I'll hit not save. You can also switch it to full speed fan mode, and this is going to just ramp your fans all the time, even when the laptop's not under load. Uh, I generally don't recommend. Uh, I generally don't recommend doing full speed fans all the time. If you're going to do um, full speed fans, just do it when you're you're playing games or whatever, and then switch it off because you don't want to kill your fan motors uh, too soon. Under performance mode in custom, you can enable or disable uh, your power limits, your GPU, CPU dynamic boost, uh, your TDP. Um, and of course it says 115 here plus 25 for the 140 watt potential boost, but we'll never see that in ever uh, in our, any kind of workload. Uh, but if you want the most performance out of the machine, you probably would want to set all the sliders up to max uh, and run custom mode in full speed mode. Um, but today we'll be testing primarily in performance mode. We will start out in custom mode though for our fan noise testing. Uh, let me just go ahead and switch it back to, I'll just put it to balance mode for right now. We're about to do our speaker testing. Um, a couple other settings that you should know about. We have GPU overclock. All right, you can, you can adjust these settings and you know you want to make sure you understand there are some risks overclocking the hardware. You may, uh, you may burn your hardware out a little bit sooner overclocking. I don't think it's very likely that that's going to happen. Uh, and I typically do overclock my hardware uh, in my laptops. Now, if you want to keep the laptop for like seven years, then probably, yeah, don't overclock. If you plan on upgrading every few years, then overclocking is probably safe, unlikely to damage your hardware in a short period of time. Um, obviously, I think the, the best longevity is probably undervolting and overclocking at the same time. But, uh, and not doing too aggressive of an overclock. You wanna do a little bit more moderate overclock. Now, you can use the software here by, by default, 150 core clock overclock and 200 megahertz uh, VRAM overclock, which is quite good. Uh, if you can do this, it's, it's gonna be a nice performance boost in almost every single RTX 4060, 4050, 4070, will be able to do this much of an overclock, 4080 and 4090 as well, um, honestly, I have yet to overclock a GPU this year that wasn't stable at at least 220. Like, and I've overclocked what, like 25, 30 laptops so far, and all of them are stable at around 200 to 220. Like 200 at least is usually stable. Um, going to 225 is usually where instability marts might start happening. Um, and I think the VRAM could be overclocked a little bit more as well. So uh, anyway, so we are going to be doing are testing today with no overclock applied, uh, but we'll save this. So you can you can save this. You can flip it on and off with this button, and uh, you also have network boost. You can adjust some basic settings if you want to prioritize a certain application. Um, I don't typically do this. I don't really. I I think it can cause more problems than not. Uh, Auto close, what is this setting? Oh, when you open a certain game, if you want other applications to turn off, you can auto close applications when launching certain games. GPU working mode, this laptop has NVIDIA Optimus, Advanced Optimus, I believe. So under here, you can see I can select uh, Optimus mode or NVIDIA only mode. That means that we have advanced Optimus. We can switch on the fly without needing to restart the machine, which is awesome sauce. It's very nice. Uh, we also have G-Sync on the display as well. So that's also really nice for playing AAA titles with under 60 FPS. You can prevent any kind of screen tearing uh, by enabling G-Sync. And G-Sync is currently enabled and we are in NVIDIA GPU only mode for maximum possible performance. All right, so manage display mode is where you can set this. You can also check to see which laptop GPU is being utilized over here in the bottom right corner. Um, and there you can see we're currently with the RTX 4060 active. Uh, if you want, if that display thing is not being shown, you can enable it uh, in here with, 
display GPU activity icon and notification area. You want that checked and that way you can check which GPU your laptop is running on. All right, so uh, yeah, and by bypassing this running in NVIDIA GPU only mode, we are going to get slightly better performance than if we were in, uh, if this laptop did not have a MUX switch or advanced optimus and we had to route through the iGPU. So we're getting like a nice little performance boost. Um, we can also go to dedicated GPU only mode. It, it does not really improve performance. Um, this just prevents you from switching to the integrated GPU. It might improve thermals just a little bit. Basically this disables the integrated GPU. Um, and also I wanna mention that if you're having problems with battery life, you can use hybrid iGPU only mode. This is going to uh, make it so that you won't switch to the NVIDIA GPU, okay? So if we switch to this mode, it makes it so that your uh, discrete graphics will not work anymore. Um, it will not activate, it won't pull juice from your battery and that's gonna help prevent. Like that's one of the problems you'll run into with a lot of uh, laptops with Optimus. It's constantly maybe like activating the NVIDIA GPU uh, and this can prevent that um, for better battery life. Okay, so those are the, those are the key changes in here uh, that you might wanna change. You might also want to enable rapid charge if you want to have your battery uh, charge a little faster. But yeah, all right, so let's go ahead and move on to our speaker test. Uh, XC Demon says, hi, can, but can OC through software like that harm or erode the GPU in any way? Um, basically, NVIDIA uh, will set the GPU boost clocks to a clock speed that it thinks that uh, all GPUs can run at stably. And they have to basically take a threshold off the top uh, to prevent uh, any instability in laptops around the world, of course. Um, they want a nice wiggle room. And basically when you're overclocking your system, you're saying instead of running at the selected clock speed, let's run at the higher clock speed. Um, and usually you're not using too much additional wattage, maybe a little bit more on the wattage. Uh, so basically, if, as long as you're stable, you're, you're running your CUDA cores at a little bit higher clock speed. Uh, and that's basically gonna give you a little bit more performance probably in the eight to 10% range, depending on the game and how well optimized everything is. Uh, and can it theoretically ruin your laptop sooner? Maybe a little bit. You're definitely taking a little bit of risk, but I think your primary risk is your stability. You may run into more crashing if you overclock too much, but once you overclock and dial it in correctly, as far as I know, there's very minimal overhead to the GPU. Um, in terms of longevity of your, your life of your machine. Like I've overclocked my machines and I've never had a GPU go bad on me in the 15 years that I've been, 20 years I've been using laptops. So uh, it's not a common point of failure, at least, GPU overclocking. Now, I'm sure some people have had their GPU fail on them, but it's, very, it's a very rare point of failure on a laptop. Okay, let's do a... Uh, Let's do our music test. So we've got our decibel meter here. Uh, let's see how loud these speakers are. I'm not anticipating much. I'm anticipating these are more budget speakers. Uh, let's go ahead and get our baseline audio level. I'm gonna make this smaller so it's not as bright. Okay. So we're at 41.5 decibels approximately. Let's go ahead and pop into Peter Spacey Roar. I think we may have volume leveling enabled or something. Yeah, volume stabilizer is turned on in the, in the Hemix software. It's causing some issues right now with the audio popping. So uh, let's go ahead and disable volume stabilizer. 
And let's try this again. Here we go. I was like, why is why is the bass peaking weird in weird ways? Yeah, that was that was pretty odd behavior. So let's try the test once more. Yeah, so uh, not particularly great mids, highs, or bass. It's very basic, uh, basically right, right what I was expecting based on the la uh, speakers that we saw on the inside. Uh, let's go ahead and move into Faded Aeon Half-Life. You know, that song sounds pretty good on those speakers. Um, the the super bassy Peter Spacey roar didn't sound as good. Uh, Deuce Williams' La La Love You Like. Okay, so... Um, when we did this super bass heavy uh, song, we saw pretty like a little bit of thump of bass. The mids get muddled with the bass and the highs also kind of get muddled. When we're doing Faded Aeon Half-Life, we get the mids, highs, and bass kind of a little more separated and they sound pretty decent considering this, this is a cheaper laptop system. Um, La La Love You Like, we got decent mids because it really focuses mainly on the vocals uh, and not very much punchy bass with this system on, on that type of music. So it's really going to depend on the type of music you have. But in general, don't expect super high vo levels of volume. Uh, we got a little over 80 decibels in Faded Day on Half-Life, uh, which is decent. We got some decent volume out of these speakers, but it's not like super loud. It's not super clear. It's not super amazing bass. I don't know. We're like... Right around to like a seven, I think, in terms of audio rating quality. Uh, but the big thing that I would say is like a seven in terms of quality, but you got some nice, nice volume level, uh, at least with the music. You could hear the you could hear the music pretty well. Um, I mean, for the for the money, it's like average. Like this is very par for the course for around a thousand dollar laptop. Uh, but it's yeah, it's it's certainly better than the cheap. The worst speakers, but not nearly as good as the super premium laptops. So nice middle ground speakers for a thousand bucks, I guess. Okay, o okay speakers for a thousand bucks, like average speaker. Nothing special uh, is the way I would describe it. Yeah, like a seven. All right, we're gonna move into our we're gonna move into our test for our fan noise. Gotta grab the external HDD and plug this guy in and we'll elevate the laptop as well. All right, let's go ahead and get uh, 3D Mark load it up so the way we're going to test this is we're going to test each of the fan profiles and see uh, how the clock speeds are with the laptop and we're going to see um, what the speed of the machine is okay there we go all right so we're elevated by about a half inch in the back just sitting on top of that ssd and uh we're gonna go into our 
Lenovo settings here real quick. And let's go ahead and set our fan profile to full speed. Full speed, and this will be our custom slider mode with everything slid over to the right as far as it can go. And for the fun of it, let's enable our GPU overclock. Let's just see what this thing does at maximum possible performance, all right? Or not quite maximum, but the basic easy flip overclock setting. Um, so let's see what that is. Okay, checking chat. Nick K says, side note, SCAR 18 with 4080, uh, 4090, 4080, best high-end bang for the buck. Um, I don't know if it's the best high-end bang for the buck. Maybe if it's on sale, it uh, depends on the sale. But uh, the high-end bang for the buck laptops are gonna be the Omen 17 and Legion Pro 7i. Um, unless you get one of the other ones on a nice sale, like another, uh, I guess MSI GP68 with a 4080 is also a nice uh, bang for the buck. But uh, in terms of like ultimate premium level laptops, the SCAR 18 is up there. It's got a really great display, uh, an 18 inch display as well. So you get a lot of, uh, a lot of value out of the SCAR 18 with the highest end components as well. Decent speakers, decent build quality. I don't know, SCAR 18's good. But uh, yeah, certainly better value than like the Blade 18. It's kind of like a middle level in terms of price versus value, I guess is what I would say. Like it's not as premium as the Razer laptop, but it's not as cheap as the Legion or Omen 17. Uh, 800 Canadian dollars off, only $200 more than the Omen. Yeah, then that's a really good deal. Uh, on the SCAR 18. That's a really good deal. I would definitely recommend that. Uh, I would, I, if, it, if it's only $200 more than the Omen 17 for you, I would hands down definitely buy the SCAR 18 over the Omen, 7, uh, Omen 17. But that's going to come down to pricing, right? Because not all laptops, not everyone will be able to get that deal if it's a Canadian only deal. Okay. So. Here we are. We also got to open HW info because the CPU info did not want to display. <laughs> Nick says subbed for life. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, I appreciate the support, man. Um, okay. So here is our uh, HW info overlay. Uh, I'm using HW info to get our info on this laptop's CPU because MSI Afterburner did not have all of the CPU info inside of the uh, Afterburner display stats. Now uh, you can see we're pulling 33 watts of power through the CPU, 29, 33. Uh, our CPU is sitting at 63 degrees. That is excellent. 3.7 gigahertz right now on the CPU cores. I was seeing over four a little while ago. This is kind of like your average of all the cores. It, we, not, we are not really fully engaging the CPU at 100% utilization right now. Our GPU is at 2600 core clock with 105, 106 watts of power, 100 watts of power. This is normal behavior for an RTX 4060 with 100% GPU utilization. You can see our overclock is a, being applied right now. Uh, if we were to go into the Lenovo Vantage and disable the overclock, we would have a little bit drop uh, in the clock speed. Let's go ahead and do that so you can see what that looks like. So now we're at the base clock is 2445 with 8,000 megahertz on the VRAM. And I think it's it's interesting to me that this base clock is a bit lower than the base clock we have seen on some of the other 4060s. Uh, like the slim base clock was uh, a little higher than this. I think it was 2460 or maybe even 2500. A lot of the, a lot of the base clocks for the 4060s are around 2500 with a lot of the overclocking potential being close to 2700 for our overclock. So I would not be surprised to see if we could at least push 2650, uh, maybe even 2700, maybe even higher. I've, 
uh, I, someone at least claimed in chat that they got it up to 29, 2,900, which I don't know. I don't think very many 4060s would be able to go that high. That's maybe really lucky in the silicon lottery. Um, but you can see when we enable the, the GPU overclock again, bam, our clock speeds boosting up to 2,595 uh, with 8,200 on the VRAM. Our GPU temperature sitting at 76 degrees, 78. Honestly, this is a little bit spicy on the GPU temps considering we're on maximum fans, fan, max, max fans mode right now. I was, I was expecting to see a little bit lower GPU temp. I mean, this is, this is good. Don't get me wrong. This is, this is a good temp. We're not over 80 degrees. We're not close to thermal throttling yet, though the temp seems to still be rising. Okay, now it went down a little bit. We'll see if it goes over 80. Um, if it stays under 80, then I would say that's in a good place. Uh, I saw 80 just for a second there, but generally speaking, 87 degrees is where we will thermal throttle, and we wanna stay a little bit away from that if possible, because we will have a little bit reduced performance if we go all the way to 87 degrees. Um, that said, we are overclocking, which will pull a little bit higher wattage, 110 watts right now, 111 watts. Um, so, so yeah. Now, if you're, if you're wanting to reduce your GPU temperature, the best way to do that is by using MSI Afterburner to undervolt your GPU. Um, and I've done several videos explaining how to do that so far. Um, and it's going to be very similar to most other laptops uh, that have a 4060. All right. So... Those are our temps. It doesn't appear to be going up any higher. So I think we're in a good temperature range considering we're at max performance. Let's go ahead and see the fan noise. See how loud this bad boy is. All right, so here we go. Remember our baseline decibels are 41 and a half. Fifty six and a half decibels for max fan is pretty good. I'm not going to lie. That is a, a lower, more quiet max fan than you typically see. Um, a lot of max fans doing 58 to 60 decibels this year. So nice to see a quieter max fan at 56. Uh, let's go ahead and check the temperatures one more time before we move on to performance mode. All right, so 70, 79 degrees, 80 degrees right here. We're, we're not thermal throttling. We're not close to thermal throttling. This is all good in my opinion. Um, it's just not great because we've seen some 4060s this year that are pushing temperatures like down into the mid 60s right? Uh, the Omen 16, the Neo 16, I think even the Slim 5 and Pro 7, uh, sorry, the Legion Pro 5, uh, the GPU temps were, were better on those laptops than this one. So that leads me to think that maybe our GPU pace job isn't quite as good on this unit in particular uh, compared to some of the other laptops I have tested so far this year. It doesn't appear to be a failed pace job because we're staying well below thermal throttle even when we're applying an overclock. So there we go. Let's go ahead and move into uh, turning off the overclock. We'll go to performance mode. Let's go ahead and see how, how much quieter those fans get and see what the performance looks like as well. All right, so while this is adjusting the temperatures and, and all of that, let's take a look at chat. Um, among the laptop 40 series GPUs, which one of them do you consider the worst value? I've heard many consider the 4070 to be the worst. I think if you were to buy like an RTX 4070 Blade 16, or something is probably the worst value, or maybe a maybe a Blade 18 4060. Like you're paying like three, like that would probably be over three thousand dollars, I think, with that, with tax and everything. So, yeah, that would be like the worst value. But um, in general, in terms of just a general progression, 
I think it all comes down to sale price because we saw RTX 4060s now go as low as 800 bucks, 4050s as low as 750, and now we've seen 4070s on sale for one thousand dollars so if you're paying like two thousand bucks for a 4070 yeah that's bad value but uh a lot of people have given 4070s a bad rep because they didn't compete that well against 3070 ti's they're only a little bit faster like you know eight to twelve percent faster than a 3070 ti and a 3070 ti costed costs a lot less than most 4070 laptops um so i think it's just going to depend severely or very heavily on uh, how much you're paying for each GPU. But um, the 4080 and 4090 GPUs are phenomenal performance this year. Um, insane jump in terms of G laptop GPU performance. And I, 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 I really love the 4080 and 4090 in terms of like QHD and 4K gaming potential is just incredible. Um, obviously at 1080p, you don't really need to go more than a 4070, I don't think, uh, given today's current games. Um, the main issue being VRAM, if you're going to go to higher resolutions. Um, okay. Let's, yeah, but in the end, in terms of like value for each GPU, I think you're really looking at like how much you pay. Because if you get one on sale, you can get a 4050, 4060, 4070, 4080, or 4090 at a really reasonable price right now. We've seen 4090s go as low as 2500 I think 2450 for an Omen 17 was the cheapest we've seen so far. And for a 4080, we've seen around $1,800 $1, to $1,900 for the Omen 17 MSI GP68. And, uh, and then for the 4070, we've seen that now as low as 1000 bucks, which is just insane value. Uh, I would think a 4070, if you can get it for under $1,400, then that's good value. Um, but especially if you get it for under 1300 or uh, around 1200 bucks, then that's very good value. A thousand bucks, just insane. So such a good deal they had. Um, anyway, uh, I don't want to harp too much on that 4070 for a thousand bucks because that's not going to be around very much, very often at all. Right. That's, that was a temporary thing. Um, that's more like a black Friday deal in my opinion. Um, so, okay. Let's go ahead and evaluate our performance mode, fan, noise, and temperatures. So 79, 80 degrees on the GPU. Again, pretty far from thermal throttling. Uh, rock solid 24, 45 for our GPU boost clock. Again, a little bit lower than normal for our standard boost clock. 100 watts of power being pulled through the GPU. Our CPU temp, 68 degrees, 66 degrees. Only 20 watts being utilized. This is the Zen 4 architecture at work here. Very low wattage pull for 4.4 gigahertz on the core uh, clock speeds. So very nice overall uh, CPU temps. GPU temps could definitely be better, um, especially considering now it's 82, 81, 82. Uh, I don't think we're gonna see thermal throttling here, uh, no matter how long we do it with the elevated back, but if the back was not elevated and you had a little minimal, minimal airflow and you're in a hotter environment, you might run into GPU throttling. Again, I think we have enough cooling solution here with this laptop. I think the issue primarily is maybe the CPU or maybe the GPU pace job could be better is my guess on this laptop because the cooling system is certainly beefy enough to keep this thing cooler. And I think in the low 70s is what I think a better pace job on this GPU would look like given the heat pipes and fans we have on the system, which are kind of excessive, honestly, for this wattage level. Um, okay. So let's go ahead and see how loud the fans are. Fifty two point seven decibels for performance mode. That's really good. Considering that's full performance. Uh, of the GPU, you could run the overclock too and still have that same level. All right, balanced mode. Let's see what uh, what we get for our fan noise. I can hear the fans already ramping down. Um, here we are. We are now doing 80 watts of power, so we have reduced the power going through the system by 20 watts, and. Uh, 
you can see our voltage node went from 1.01 1 .01 to 885 millivolts. So we have reduced the amount of wattage, 0.91 mil, uh, volts now. We've reduced the amount of wattage going through the GPU and our temps have come down. Our clock speed has also come down quite a lot from 2440 to 2160, 2175. So around uh, a little above and below 2200. I've seen over 2200 at times as well. So there's 2220, 80 watts of power in balance mode. Taking a look at our CPU, our CPU appears to be uh, capping a little bit lower on the wattage. Maybe not, I don't know. It's it's all, it's 19 watts now, but in typical speaking in balance mode, usually you would see a little bit lower wattage as well on that CPU. Um, 65 degrees on the CPU is very nice. 4.3 gigahertz on the, the core clock, 3.7 gigahertz. 73 degrees on the GPU as well. So the GPU temps came down in balanced mode, which is, is good. Um, this is a little bit, this is what I was expecting the temps to look like in full speed mode. Full speed and max wattage, I was expecting to see low 70s, maybe even high 60s in full speed. Um, but yeah, overall, these temps are excellent, much better than uh, the performance and custom mode for the GPU temps. But again, we weren't thermal throttling anyway, so not bad. Um, let's go ahead and see how loud balanced mode is. Forty-seven and a half decibels in balance mode. It makes this system very quiet in balanced mode, and this is enough performance right here to really play 1080p games really well. Um, you know, the vast majority of 1080p games are going to play quite well, even at uh, ultra settings with this level of wattage. Obviously, if you're going to play competitive games or or whatever, you're probably going to want higher um, the higher performance modes. But if you're just doing more casual gaming, this is going to be great, I think. Um, and that's very quiet fans overall. Let's go to quiet mode and see how quiet things go and what our power limits are. So you can see our CPU now is clocking down 2.5 gigahertz on the core clock. Uh, only 11.9 watts of power going through that CPU, 12 watts. Um, 63 watts going through the GPU. Our core clock on the GPU also coming down significantly down to 2,000. Uh, our, our memory clock down to 7,000. Our temperature also went down to 72 degrees. So we have lost temps. And I can barely hear the fan anymore. The fan is extremely quiet. Uh, almost no problems with the fan noise as well. Like, uh, I it, the, the fan is basically inaudible at this point. Um, we'll go ahead and do the decibel meter check. We might hear it just a little bit, but I'm anticipating it to be around 42 decibels. Let's see. Forty-three decibels. Okay, wow. So if you're in quiet mode, uh, this is going to be good enough performance in the more casual AAA titles, or if you're okay with a little bit lower FPS, because this is going to be quite a quite a performance hit compared to full performance mode, right? Especially if the game becomes CPU bound, given that the CPU is so power limited here. Um, you really would want to only do GPU bound games. Uh, at this in quiet mode. Uh, otherwise, you're going to see big performance stutters with the, this low of wattage to that CPU. Um, but overall, you should be able to do many, many titles in quiet mode with excellent FPS. So I think that's really good all around. Um, I, think, uh, I think most people are going to be able to do quiet mode really well. All right. So Let's go ahead and move on to our performance testing. Now that we have done, let me make sure that we've done everything. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, we're moving on to Cinebench R23. And we're going to see what kind of performance we get uh, with this 
This is the first time testing this Ryzen 7 7840HS, I believe. I don't... Wait. Yes? I can't remember. Did I test this already? I think I did not test this yet. All right, so we do process lasso to ensure that the system is going to be consistent. All right, let's go ahead and start this test. We're gonna set CP priority to be above normal on Cinebench R23. We're gonna disable and exit some of these extra applications that we have open like Steam. And uh, yeah, so right now, we are in custom mode with fans set to full speed. This is how we're going to uh, run this test for Cinebench R23 at least. All right, so there we are. Let's go ahead and do our first test. Uh, Chin May asks Acer, ne Acer Helios Neo 16 4050 versus Lock 4060. Which would you prefer? Um, I think I would go for the display quality of the Neo 16 over the Lock 4060. Um, but I don't, at $1,000 right now, obviously my top pick would not be either one of those. My top pick would be the Asus F15 with a 4070 for a thousand bucks. But the display quality is massively better on the Neo 16 uh, if they're the same price. Uh, and for me, the display quality would be enough of a difference, but that's not going to be true for everybody. All right, so we got 17,567 for our first run. Let's go ahead and see what our our uh, temps and clock speed look like. Wow. So we are pulling 91 watts of power, 97 degrees, 98 degrees. We're going to cap the 100 degree mark all straight. Um, 4.7 gigahertz on our clock speed for the CPU. Um, if you want lower temperatures, it's pretty simple how to get it. Just lower the power limit by a little bit. Um, let's go ahead and see what we get in our test here. I got to say 17,500 uh, was very good for the, a laptop of this price. 17,024 for that uh, test. We, we were focused on HW Info. Um, typical laptops under 1,000 bucks are like, I don't know, anywhere from 12 to 15,000 in Cinebench R23. So the fact that we're doing 17 and a half thousand and maybe we could push this to over 18,000, I bet we could, is excellent. That's very good performance overall uh, for under $1,000. So for CPU performance, giant thumbs up. That said, our temps on the CPU are spicy. So, we're thermal throttling nonstop in custom mode right now. Let's see what we get. 17,458. Taking a look here. Yeah, you can see we're doing 85 watts of power, 91 watts of power, 99 degrees Celsius nonstop, 4.7 gigahertz, I mean, it's good clock speed, it's good performance, but we are spicy on the temperatures here. Very spicy on the temperatures. So I would say the two solutions here may be a repaste, but most likely, I think the CPU is probably fine for the paste job. We just had a lot of wattage going through there. If you want to get better temps and still have most of the performance, 
I believe what you're gonna to wanna to do is just lower the power limit to like 80 watts or so. 17,363, 362. Um, let's go to our custom mode. Let's go to performance. Let's do our CPU peak power. Let's just do uh, 80 watts for our peak power, okay? For everything. All right, so we're doing 80 watts for our CPU power limit. We can also lower our CPU throttle temperature. You could take this down. If you wanted to never go above 90, you can just lock this to 90, by the way. Um, I like that there are these easy to access controls here. Let's go ahead and try running this again. Now that we've set 80 watts for our power limit, let's see if that is applied successfully. 82 watts, 62 watts, 79.9 watts of power, perfect. Right at 80 watts right here. Um, and look at our temps, 85 degrees, 87 degrees. Our clock speeds are 4.64. You know, doing 10 more watts of power to the CPU, we saw a higher clock speed, uh, but only by like 100 megahertz. And our temps are now 10 degrees cooler at 90 degrees Celsius. So that goes to show you that um, these Ryzen chips, they don't really get much benefit from ramping the power limit too hot. 16,696. We lost uh, about 300 to 600-ish in terms of score. So obviously we did get reduced performance by doing that, but our temps are going to be, I think, more sustainable in the long run. Kim says an A15 with 4070 is 1600 USD here in South Korea. Yeah, that's a lot more money than the United States pricing. Wow. Uh, Brian says, hey, Gizmo, what about the Legion Pro 5i with 4070 at 1600? Uh, if that has a QHD 240 hertz display, 500 nits, then I think that Legion Pro 5 is not a bad deal. Uh, I would say ideally you'd probably want to have it be under 1500 for a Pro 5 with a QHD 240 hertz uh, for a 4070, but yeah, 1600 is not bad. Maybe there's gonna be some coupons or sales to bring it down to like 1500, then I would say it's a good deal. Uh, the thing is, it's just the Pro 5 with the 4070, you really like, I don't know. I think 1300, 1400 is where it becomes a really good deal, like excellent deal uh, with a high quality display. Wow, we got over 17,152. Um, with our power limit reduction, uh, let's try performance mode. Performance mode, let's see. What's our power limits look like in performance mode and fan noise and all that look like? Uh, I'm temperature, I'm curious to see how Lenovo designed the temperature and everything to ramp. So performance mode, 93 watts of power, 96 degrees. Performance mode just lets this thing fly. Uh, though I'm not sure if it's going to come down and settle down uh, to a little bit lower power limit after a little while. Uh, Fisher Edda says, I just bought one for 1340 UDS in Germany. Uh, even better, Legion Slim 5 4060 costs over 1600 too in Indonesia. Ooh, spicy, spicy prices, guys. 17,200 basically uh, in performance mode. Uh, very good performance, but our temps are also very hot and spicy in performance mode. So, yeah, interesting. Performance mode, just letting it fly. I feel like doing custom mode is the way to go uh, if you want CPU performance at reasonable temps. Balance mode, let's see what balance mode does in Cinebench R23. You know, balance mode, of course, should be uh, very good performance still, but I'm anticipating a, a, a more severe CPU throttle. Um, so 45 watts of power in balanced mode. Really, really throttling you hard here in balanced mode. 15,700, wow. So that's, I feel like that's still pretty good performance given it's lower wattage. 
uh, 4.1 gigahertz on all of the cores here in balanced mode, 45 watts, you know, and our fan noise is, it sounds like right around the 47, 48 decibels again. So that's really good. Like great temps, good clock speed still, and fairly quiet. So, I mean, if you're, if you're trying to get a nice balance of everything, balance mode is probably the way to go uh, for just really reining in those CPU temps um, or custom mode. If you, if you want to fine tune it, I think custom mode and you want excellent temps, I'll bet custom mode would really do a good job of bringing us to the right point. 15,000 here in balance mode. Let's do custom mode. Uh, let's set our power limits down to uh, 65. I'll bet you this is going to give us 90% of the performance while at the same time giving us excellent temps. Let's see. So 65 watts of power. Boom, 65 watts of power. Our temps, 78 degrees right now, 76 degrees actually, 77. We're at 4.5 gigahertz on our clock speed. Excellent. Like we went from 4.7 to 4.5 gigahertz by dropping 25 watts of power and our temps are now below 80 in the, in the mid 70s, high 70s, 78. Yeah, I mean, if this was my system, I'd probably do like 65 watts or something, 65, 70 watts to get us, get me dialed into the perfect temp range while giving me the vast majority of performance. And of course, if I undervolted and overclocked, I could probably get higher clock speed <laughs> as well. Uh, so if you use UXTU to undervolt this system, I think it would be supported. Um, you know, I'm anticipating probably over 18,000 with better temps, especially if you were to repaste the system. Okay. Uh, Bacha says, is this one better than the Asus A16 7600? 165 hertz. So the display is better on the Asus A16 with the RX 7600S. Um, if you're after high quality display for really cheap, then going with the Asus lineup is going to be the better option than the Lenovo Lock lineup because the Asus lineup sticks to 100% sRGB, even on their cheaper laptops. And uh, those are currently on sale for $800 or $900 or $1,000, depending on which one you get. 16,527. So basically what you're looking at, uh, if you go full power nonstop, right around 17 and a half thousand. If you rein this thing in, you're looking at 16 and a half thousand at 65 watts. And if you're all the way down to 45 watts, you're looking at 15,000 in Cinebench R23. Um, so depending on your fan speed and uh, what fan profile you're looking at, you're looking at very good CPU performance for your money. That's the thing I'm that's the thing I'm saying. And for your fan noise. If you want good fan noise, uh, if you want excellent fan noise and good temps and still have pretty dang good performance, this laptop can do that. Uh, so that's excellent. All right. We're moving into our time spy test now. Let's go ahead and get time spy reopen back up. I'm waiting for the system to load steam. It doesn't want to load steam for some reason. Okay. Uh, how many nits brightness for this display? We, we measured it in the middle at max brightness at 312 nits. Lenovo claims it'll be 350 nits, but we did not test it to be that high. All right, so if you're wondering what games we'll be testing today, we are gonna be testing Apex Legends, Time Spy, um, Warzone 2, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, God of War, Cyberpunk 2077, Hogwarts, Dead Space, Last of Us Part 1, Dying Light 2, Baldur's Gate 3, the new popular RPG. I, is, it is epic. It is really well done. Um, but it is turn-based combat, which is not going to be for everybody. But 
it is extremely imaginative and flexible gameplay that is very entertaining. And then we're going to finish it out with The Witcher 3, and then we're going to summarize everything that we've learned about the laptop. Okay, so... Let's go ahead and get into our Time Spy test. So keep in mind, we are running in custom mode. All sliders maxed with no default overclock. I'm tempted to do the default overclock, but yeah. LSP says rip for not testing Doom Eternal. Ah. <laughs> uh, Doom Eternal is just such an old game, man. I just, it's hard for me to, to, to test it, keep testing it. Um, obviously, it's a good game. It's not a bad game. Nothing, nothing wrong with it. I just got to focus on, you know, what are the players playing? What are the players most interested in? And I just don't think people are as interested in Doom Eternal uh, as you are, LSP. I'm sorry, man. Uh, I feel bad, but it's, it's the reality. Uh, okay, so. What were the best scores? Are you asking about Cinebench R23? Uh, we got 17,500, I think, for our best score in Cinebench R23 with everything ran to the max. Um, okay. For Time Spy, RTX 4060, 67 degrees, 68 degrees, 57 degrees on the CPU right now. So far, temperatures are excellent, but we're not doing an extended run. We did do an extended loop run earlier, and we did get temps up to uh, high 70s, low 80s. Um, keep in mind, we are no overclocking right now. Uh, and uh, so overall, right now, our temps are looking great. Our performance appears to be pretty dang good. I'm expecting, hoping, a non-overclocked RTX 4060 to get us right around 10,500 or so, maybe 10,600. Um, with applying a bit of an overclock, I'm sure we could push this closer to 10,800, maybe 11,000. Um, that's what's just like a basic quick overclock. Uh, Diveroso says, wow. Yeah, it's very good performance. And the, the thing about this laptop, too, is that uh, if, you tune if you tune the laptop, depending on your performance profile, you can really get good performance at quiet fan noise as well. Only 45 uh, watts of power going through the CPU. We were still getting over 4 gigahertz on all the cores. And the, fan was, the, the laptop was quiet. It was very quiet. Overall, like 47 decibels. Um, most underrated tech YouTuber, thanks. <laughs> Whose vids are really good. I appreciate it, thank you. Um, so, our temps on the GPU have climbed 72 degrees right now, uh, 33 watts of power going through that CPU, which is a bit higher, which is probably attributing to our wattage pull being a bit more as well. Um, I think, I think it, the, since we have a shared heat pipe system, if the CPU pulls 33, 35, 45 watts of power, which we may see in, the, in some of these tests, like this CPU only test, this is the CPU test for time spy, we're probably pulling uh, in the 60 to 80 watts range, I bet. Uh, 77 watts right now, 78 watts, very spicy temperature, 85 degrees. It can, these Ryzen chips can get hot if you run a lot of wattage through them. So. Um, I'm looking, uh, one of the things I'm gonna look for in our gaming tests today is what, what does our CPU wattage look like? What does our GPU wattage look like? And uh, what do our temps look like? You know, so, especially in games like Dead Space. All right, graphic score, 10,357. That's, uh, I think that's a little bit on the lower side for an RTX 4060. Um, like I said, the boot, the base clock was only 2440 or something like that. Um, typical base clock is more like 2500 for most of RTX 4060s I've been testing. Um, so that that's the reason why that's a little bit lower. 
If we were to apply, you know, we could easily get this over like into the 10,600, 700 range just by flipping on our overclock button right here. Um, I don't even need to do the test because I've done this test on like 15 different RTX 4060 laptops now at this point. Um, so yeah, we can definitely boost this, this score a bit. Um, 11,736 is good for a CPU score, but not necessarily amazing. Uh, we only have uh, eight cores in here. If we had more cores, we could certainly boost this a little bit higher. Um, keep in mind, we did have everything maxed out in custom mode. So CPU could go fly as high as it wanted. Uh, we could also boost the CPU score by, uh, by undervolting probably get it over 12,000 with an undervolt. Um, yeah, so these are good scores for a under $1,000 laptop is what I will say. Uh, very good scores for under $1,000. Okay. Let's go ahead and get into Apex Legends. Uh, okay. Santhu says Legion Pro 5 with 77. 45HX is cheaper than a Legion Pro 5i with a 13700HX by about $100. Is the 7745HX on the 5 nanometer process good enough? On performance, heard that it can become toasty fast um, parameters. So I think either of those CPUs are good. The, the Legion Pro 5i with the 13700HX has a lot more cores to it, uh, which is going to boost CPU-bound game, uh, not games, but like CPU multi-core threaded workloads um, by a little bit, I think. Uh, and I'm pretty sure the Cinebench R23 scores are much higher for the i7-13700HX. That said, inside of games... I, I would not be surprised if the 7745HX beats the, the i7-13700HX. Um, but it would be very competitive, and it would, it would vary from game to game, which, which CPU is going to perform better. I will bet you, though, that the, the Intel is going to run cooler um, at the same wattage levels. But the Ryzen can be run, uh, have its temperatures improved massively simply by power limiting the CPU a little bit to reduce how much power is going through that CPU um, compared to the Intel, because it's going to run more efficiently. So if you know how to tune the Ryzen CPU, then I think it's a very good option as well. So it's really going to just depend on you, the individual, what you're deal willing to deal with. So we're on high settings right now. I don't know why that setting wasn't he set. All right, um, interesting. All right, so we're on high settings right now. Let's go ahead and... Change a couple of other settings while I'm at it here. All right. So um, Apex Legends one of my favorite games of all time absolutely epic shooter game and uh a game i've played literally thousands of hours in uh and was in the top 1500 players in the ranked mode uh at one point or not quite 1500 it's like 50, I would, my my numbered rank was like 1545 or something out of millions of players but obviously I'm not that good anymore because I don't play very much anymore. All right, so um, let's go ahead and see. We're on, we're on max settings right now at 1920 by 1200 resolution, all right? 150 FPS right now, 106 for our 1% lows. It's very good. There is no ghosting on this display. It's a very fast response rate, uh, very minimal ghosting at least. Very good aim. I do not feel like you're going to get a huge difference, you know, trying to get a faster response rate display. Uh, 
Now, if we were to go to low settings, it would look even better. Let's take a quick look at our performance levels, 69 degrees on the GPU, 2460 on the core clock, 41 watts of power going through that CPU, 77 degrees on the CPU, 4.3 gigahertz, 4.2 gigahertz. Uh, overall, very good performance, very smooth gameplay, no issues here. Let's go ahead and try low settings and see if we can get to the uh, max FPS cap of 300. It doesn't, does not look like we will, but our FPS is still very good. 226 with 1% for our, our 118 for our 1% lows. Very smooth gameplay, no issues here. Let's go ahead and try to hop into a match and uh, see how we handle a match. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the audio on and I'll, look, I'll try to listen for some directional audio. Miwana says, I got 11,400 with a plus 250 OC. Nice. That's with a 4060 with a lock, 16. Uh, that's that's a very good score for an RTX 4060. Uh, is it possible to undervolt and overclock the CPU at the same time? Uh, yes, it should be using UXTU. Uh, I have not verified that it is supported uh, yet or anything like that, but uh, I have undervolted and overclocked like four or five different Ryzen CPUs in 2023 so far, and each time, we got more performance at the same wattage level, which is basically undervolting and overclocking at the same time. Um, Wasim says, hi brother, I love your videos. Thanks brother, appreciate it. Um, Ten K score with a more battery friendly processor at that price is pretty impressive, or is incredibly impressive. Uh, yeah, it is good. Like. It is, it is very good. I don't know if it's incredibly impressive. Well, it, well, put it this way. It's excellent. I would say uh, the CPU in this, for under $1,000, the CPU in this is about as good as it gets, almost. There are probably a handful of other laptops that have more CPU performance for your money. Uh, but from a CPU performance perspective, this is close to as good as it gets. And I would certainly rather have this CPU than the CPU in the Asus Tough um, F15. All right, I gotta reposition the laptop here for gaming now. We're gonna rotate. Also adjust the camera here. Hold on, bear with me everybody. Okay, so we'll do Ooh, charge rifle and R99. Nah, we'll go flatline. Okay, I have refreshed our FPS counter. Oh, we're doing 300 FPS for a moment there. <laughs> Okay, I fell down. We're gonna try to flank around the backside here. Got us good. 260 FPS, 100 for our 1% lows is very good. Our temps at 70 degrees on both the CPU and GPU, also very good. Um, I can't really hear directional audio if I'm being honest. I'm not really seeing much for directional audio. 
Uh, we got shot by someone else at the same time. I'm not sure where from, but we got owned by the same guy two times in a row. I think there was a guy right behind us. Oh, maybe not. That guy just annihilated me. Ooh, fancy. I am fancy. <laughs> no, I'm not. Man, these guys are good. All right, we got a kill. Well, we're doing a lot of damage to people. We're not really getting any kills, though. It's annoying that a headshot and a body shot is not quite killing them. My goal right now is just to pin these guys down if I can. So that way they can't advance on our position. Oh my goodness. Yes, please smoke me. I've got a thermal scope so I can see these guys through smoke. That's why I was like, please smoke me. Ow. I'm tempted to jump this guy. If I can crack him, I'll jump him. Okay, so we're at... I'm just gonna go rush these guys, and then if I die, I'll, I'll go ahead and move on to the next game. I'm just having too much fun right now. Oh, okay, we're dead. <laughs> so 230 FPS, 108. Um, obviously, it's not the max 300, but that's still excellent. This guy was a Masters player right here. Um, obviously, a very good player. Uh, okay, so. Uh, LSP says, can you review the Zephyrus M16 Alienware X16? Alienware X16 is one I really want to review. Okay, so next game, uh, Warzone 2. Let's see if we're running into any issues loading, loading that. Um, so uh, Alienware X16 would be a great laptop for me to review. It's just on the more expensive side, uh, though I would be te certainly tempted to, to review it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'd be a very interesting one. Uh, okay, we do not want that.
So this is going to be a very interesting game to see what we get in performance because uh, I've not tested the CPU, I don't think. And I'm hoping we can get over 100 FPS, uh, especially considering the six core Ryzen Zen 4 CPU was getting like 90 to 115 in the S Lenovo Legion Slim 5. So Warzone 2 being a very CPU bound game, we're not gonna hit we're not going to hit high GPU utilization, uh, especially on low settings. Um, but I'm hoping we'll still get excellent performance. Uh, you probably already answered this, but I think I lost that part. Will you include Starfield as a benchmark when it comes out? Yes, I do plan on using Starfield. Um, I plan on playing Starfield a lot when it comes out. So, uh, And I do plan on playing it. Or sorry, I do plan on benchmarking it. Uh, I'll probably replace one of the, I'm not sure, maybe, maybe I'll replace God of War with Starfield. I'm not sure. I like God of War as a test though. It's very, very quick. Okay, so we're at 144 hertz refresh rate, 1920 by 1200. DLSS on quality, we're going to do to minimum settings. Everything's going to be very, very quiet. Or sorry, very, very uh, CPU bound because we're on the low side. All right, we want Warzone. Warzone, there it is. Battle Royale. So it looks like we've already got our shaders rendered. Wait, no, they're at 82% up there in the top left. I don't know why they weren't showing on the... They weren't showing, but either way, if they're at 82%, they load really fast. So I think we should have 100% shaders loaded, no problem. Uh, have you actually played Doom outside of the benchmarks? Yeah, I went ahead and played like an hour hour, hour and a half of Doom Eternal, uh, and it's fun. I was enjoying it, it's a fun shooter. Um, I think I've never been a huge fan of the Doom series, but I think it's a good, I think it's a good game. I wish there was a better way to test Warzone. Why do you enable voltage limit while benchmarking except for Cinebench? I'm not sure what you mean, Rivardi. Voltage limit on CPU, GPU. Um, in Cinebench R23, I was messing with the voltage limit or different power profiles. Uh, and everything just to see um, what the temperatures look like at different power levels because we were getting very spicy at max. Um, so, you know, like I, I feel like the Ryzen CPU, realistically, you don't need to run it at max, max uh, power limit because you get very minimal returns for a huge increase to your um, huge increase to your temperature. But inside of custom mode, we can you know tweak that, and I would encourage users to tweak it uh, to get the most optimal thermals for their laptop, and uh, especially if you're a more advanced user. Whereas you know with uh, I'm gonna rotate the legs on the camera a little bit here. All right. Uh, you know, whereas with uh, the games custom mode, I just my goal is to get as high FPS as, pro, uh, as possible. Now, if we run into 100 degrees Celsius temperatures again, like say in dead space, I, I will probably play with the custom power limit just to show people how to properly tune it in that type of a scenario. But I don't think we're gonna run into that, that problem again, I don't think. 
We know someone landed over here. We're doing 103 FPS, 67 for our 1% low. Hi, buddy. So right now we're getting excellent performance, 51 watts of power going through the CPU, uh, 71 degrees Celsius on the CPU, 63 on the GPU. The GPU, of course, not being fully utilized at only like 50 to 60 watt, uh, watts of power because this is a very CPU-bound game. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the game audio so we can listen to some shooting as I fight people. Okay. Avoid the gas. Get to the safe zone. Return here. Enemy soldier incoming. So, very nice, 49 watts of power right now, 73 degrees, 65 on the CPU, or sorry, the GPU, 60 watts of power going through that CPU. This is taking a long time to land. Louis Soto says, well, we have a new king, RIP HP. Sorry, sorry, HP Omen. A new king in which way? I guess I would need to know. Okay. Here we are. Let's go ahead and do our official test running down the bridge. I do prefer to do this test if I can, but Warzone switch between, switches between different maps and sometimes I can't do it on this map. Ninety eight FPS, sixty seven for our one percent low. What are all these attack noise sounds? All right, I like that. Let's go ahead and uh, get us another plate. Look for any enemies over here. So uh, 95 FPS on average, 61 for 1% lows. This is as, almost exactly the same uh, performance that we were getting in the Ryzen 5 uh, CPU in the Slim, in the Slim 5. But uh, keep in mind that, you know, we were getting more FPS, right, out of... Uh, the Ryzen 9 7945 HX or the i9 13900 or 1980 HX. Like the i the Intel i9 gets the most FPS in Warzone 2 at about 150 to 155, and then the Ryzen 16 core is getting like 135. This one's getting around 96 FPS in this area. Oh, I could buy stuff, but I don't have money. What's this? Munitions box? Is this any good? Will someone come find me? Okay, I don't think we're gonna find anybody to fight. Hey, 
Interesting stun grenade. Come fight me! Like, I want to try to kill myself, um, and then, uh, and then I may be able to get a gulag fight in at least. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Here, you can see the replay of me being mowed over. <laughs> All right, we got annihilated. It's perfect. Thank you so much. All right, I'm going to refresh our average inside the gulag and see what we get. Uh, in the $1,000 range, the new king is really the uh, Asus F15 RTX 4070. You can get up there? What? I didn't even know you could get up there. Uh, he really surprised me. Okay, 117 FPS, 70 for a 1% lows. If there's not anybody immediately to fight, we're just gonna end this, end this area. I got a silenced weapon. That's not gonna work to attract them. Okay, so excellent. Uh, so in the 90 to 120 FPS range, uh, depending on the area inside of Warzone 2, let's go ahead and move into CSGO. Wasim says, uh, I've, I'm very confused between the Acer Helios Neo 16 and the Asus Tough A15. What do you think is better for heavy gaming and working? Um, well, if it's possible, I would get the 4060 over the 4050, even if you're getting a slight processor downgrade like that. Um, but the display on the Neo 16 is probably going to be noticeably better. So if the display is better then I would display upgrade is big for some people and not as big for others. Uh, for example, if you're going to use a, an external monitor a lot, then maybe the internal laptop display matters a lot less. Um, so it's going to just really develop, uh, depend on each person. Okay, so we're going to, I'm going to let this benchmark go and I'm going to go to the bathroom while it's running. Uh... Luxado says, Dad feel when you watch a review on a laptop, on the laptop being reviewed. Nice. Yeah, it really helps you, uh, I don't know, I guess verify my review. <laughs> you know, if the, if the laptop review is legit, then, you know, you know it's legit because you have the laptop in hand and be like, yeah, that's the FPS I get or whatever. I don't know. Um, okay, so we're going to go ahead and play this. Uh, the main thing to look for in CSGO is... FPS in the smokes, and then FPS in general, um, as well as our total average. So let's go ahead and see what we get. And the 300 to 400 range starting out with, I'll be right back.
Okay. I am back, my business is done. Looks like we're doing 300 FPS. Let's see what we get for our average. Three hundred and seventy eight point eight seven FPS. So three seven eight point eight seven. Three hundred and seventy nine FPS. Um, very good, obviously. Excellent performance. Let's hop into a match with Dust Two and shoot some people. Or at least spectate some people being shot. Uh, Luxato says, had this for a little over a month so far to game on and casually browse. No complaints considering the price. Yeah, I would agree. Like it's great value entry level laptop uh, with I think most people are going to have minimal issues. I think the main issue that some people are going to um, have with it is the color gamut on the display could be better. Uh, especially since there are some laptops out there that have better color gamuts for the price. It's one of the trade-offs you make getting this laptop. Okay, so we're on uh, the default high settings for video. All right. 1920 by 1200. Currently doing 240, 260, 270 FPS. 330 FPS. So yeah, we're easily going to hit more than 144 FPS. Even in the gameplay maps. But I will go try to kill some people real quick. Let's see what we get. Let's see if we can get a kill. Two at once? That's not fair. I was like, who do I aim at? <laughs> I got shotguns. I got shotguns too. Um, all right. So, so you can see as low as 170 FPS, but not once have we seen it dip below 144, uh, even on high settings here. So very nice. Let's move on to our next game, which is going to be God of War. Uh, Nick K says, can you convince my wife to let me buy a laptop now? <laughs> well, I would say uh, the biggest way to convince her is probably to get a laptop that is super on sale. There's a really good deal. And then promise that you won't need to get another laptop for a long time because you pro like like you get a you get like the one of these laptops for 1080p gaming you won't need to get another laptop again as long as you're happy at that resolution I don't know for at least three to four years probably um, you'll be playing on very high settings and basically all the games for a while uh, that's what that would be my argument <laughs> or like. Uh, maybe you go with the whole, like, well, let me save up for three months and then, or I don't know, maybe, I don't know what your wife's like, so good luck convincing her. <laughs> uh, big fog boy says, does any of your laptops lose battery when you shut them down? Just bought the Legion Pro 7i and it has some battery drain when I shut it down. My old Mac 17 doesn't lose battery when I shut it down. Uh, typically speaking, you shouldn't have, your battery life should not be draining when the laptop's off, but it uh, depends for how long. If it's for like a short period of time, like a day, you might lose one or 2% or something like that. But if it's like weeks, then yeah, I would expect battery drain loss. That's just the nature of lithium ion batteries. Uh, if it's like 20% in a day, then that's pretty weird. Um, I don't know. That would be very weird to me, but I, I, you have to go tell me how much percentage drain you're losing. Okay. So let's go ahead and run. 
God of War using a lot of CPU wattage right now, 45 watts, 87 degrees on the CPU right now, a bit spicy on that CPU. That's the highest CPU temps we've seen so far today. Uh, 76 on the GPU is not bad. Interesting, 4.5 gigahertz on that CPU. 67 FPS is very good for an RTX 4060, 49 FPS. Um, our CPU clock is just really cramming at 4.5, really roaring, uh, 3.6, I don't know, maybe it's cycling between which CPU is being represented, but 45 watts of CPU utilization is quite high, I think, for a GPU-bound game like God of War. Uh, 67 FPS is going to be very smooth, especially with G-Sync. It looks really good, no screen tearing at all. 49 FPS for 1% low is very good. If you want to boost your FPS a lot, just go to your graphic settings um, and just switch it down to original preset. And now you're going to do some high FPS gaming. And honestly, the game looks like the same to me uh, <laughs> with original versus ultra. Now we're doing 120 FPS um, for high FPS gaming. Wow. Wow. 55 watts of power through that CPU now. Switching to original. Really cramming that CPU even more. Interesting, but very good FPS, obviously. A bit spicy on the temps, though. Um, okay, now we're moving into Cyberpunk 2077. Big Fork Boy says, it loses about 6% a day, which I find weird. I have fast boot and start fast startup disabled too. Uh, I'm not sure. 6% does seem a little bit high. Um, but uh, lithium ion batteries do drain over time, just as a nature of them. Uh, they want to get down to the 50% range. If, it, if it's draining below 50%, uh, like if it's 100%, it's going to phantom drain more quickly then it will phantom drain once it gets down to like below 80 percent for example once it's below 80 percent like down to 60 50 60 percent it should phantom drain very slowly um i'm not sure i do i would expect some phantom drain on all laptops though hard to say how much though LSP says, I have a Legion Pro 7i with max specs. I'm planning to use it for 10 years. Already bought three-year premium on-site warranty. Nice. Well, why didn't you go for the four-year on-site warranty if you're going to plan on keeping it the whole, all, like, you know? Like, if you know for sure you're going to keep that laptop a long time, I would get the maximum warranty possible. Because the, the laptop is far more likely to break the longer you go into the warranty period. Like... Either the laptop will have something broken on it in the first like month or you'll just like notice, oh, there's a dead pixel or like the screen stop working or the hinge is coming apart or whatever. Most of that stuff's going to happen either right away at the beginning um, or like when right as you get the laptop or it's going to happen like as far into the laptop period as possible. Though I think most laptops will last five plus years on average as long as they're well taken care of. Three-year warranty is cheaper than four-year due to sales. Well, of course it's cheaper. I would expect it to be cheaper, obviously. Uh, so 79 FPS for 1% lows. We do have frame generation enabled. We had a nice big stutter here. Um, that really hurt our 1% lows, but things are coming back into a more reasonable range for 1% lows now. Uh, 77 FPS on average, 40 for 1% lows, 46 now. Uh, our GPU is doing 80, 90 watts, 87 to 90 watts of power. Our CPU, 42 watts, 76 degrees on that CPU, and 74 degrees on the GPU. Our VRAM is max at 7.9 gigs. We have 8 gigs of VRAM on here, uh, but it is not affecting our 1% low at this time. Um, so far, things are looking smooth. 
and good, even though we're moving through multiple areas of the map fairly quickly. 93 watts of power, 84 overall for our average. Let's see what the official measurement is for the laptop. We're gonna move this on-screen display. 83.8 FPS for our uh, for our average, which is actually very close to what we averaged with MSI Afterburner. Usually it's a bit, dis it has a bit of a disparity. Um, very good performance here. Uh, no issues with uh, stuttering, which we've seen in some of the laptops, uh, even at 1200p because of textures and VRAM. Um, let's go ahead and do Let's go ahead and get into a map area and go shoot some bad guys. All right, let's go load game. There we are. I would get the four year warranty if price difference was only 25%, but the three year warranty isn't lower than two year warranty due to massive sales. Interesting. Uh, L Y M F O M A. I have blanked a lot of women, but after marriage, my wife blanked me, and my with my divorce and alimony. Sorry about that, man. I hope I hope you can make a, a good recovery and find someone new. That's awesome. I'm a bit broke, so this one or the predator, which one to pick? Uh, well, I would say wait until the very end to give my full opinion. But my initial. My initial thought right now is that this one's quite good if you're okay with, uh, oh. this one is really good if you're, oh wait, we're gonna get a little bit different of a battle scene. As long as you're okay with a lower color gamut display, this one's quite good. Um, I think that the, the Acer laptops tend to have higher quality uh, display color gamuts. And the other thing about uh, this one is that uh, it does have good brightness as well. And it's 16 by 10 aspect ratio, which is also really nice. And depending on which Acer you're talking about, I'd have to, I'd have to know. Um, so it's hard for me to give specific advice to people without knowing the exact models you're talking about with the, the exact CPU, GPU, and display options. Because there's just so much variability out there. Interesting, our average FPS in the benchmark is almost ex exactly the same as uh, what we were getting in this little combat sequence area, which is kind of cool. 81 FPS, 67 for our 1% lows. Uh, feels very good. Uh, of course, with frame generation on though, I usually target higher FPS. I would recommend probably something like high with uh, no ray tracing. And now we're doing 140, 737 with a 100 for our 1% lows. Uh, it's going to be quite a bit smoother and feel quite a bit better, in my opinion, at this FPS range. So uh, this is what I would target if I was playing the game on this laptop. There you go. All right, so let's go ahead and move into our next game. You can see all the games we've got coming up. Next up is Hogwarts, Dead Space, Last of Us. Dying Light 2, then we got the brand new Baldur's Gate 3 and Witcher 3 to finish this out. So, next up we have Hogwarts Legacy. All right. Austin Garber says, I've been eyeing this Best Buy deal, but no one is talking about it. Is there something wrong with it? Legion Slim 7i, WQXGA i9-13900H, so keep in mind with that i9-13900H, it's really nothing special. It's actually probably a worse CPU than the i7-13700HX. Um, RTX 4070, one terabyte SSD for $1749. So the Slim 7i, the things to know about that one is that it's a more premium chassis, better RGB lighting. Um, 
compared to say this one, um, I will say that's a high price for a 4070 with an i9 13900H. I got to know more details about that display quality. I'm guessing that's a 2560 by 1600 resolution display. Uh, if it's a QHD 240 hertz display, then I would say that's just an okay deal for 1749. A good deal for that price and specs would probably be more like 1600 to 1500 with a really good deal being like 1450, 1500, um, somewhere in that range. You are, you are paying for like higher end speakers with that, higher end webcam probably, better ports, um, Austin. So there's a lot of advantages that are like subtle, harder to keep track of. And then of course the display quality is probably the biggest thing you're paying for uh, with a system like that. So texture quality will set to low. Everything else will be on ultra with ray tracing enabled and all of that. Let's go ahead and hop into the game. LSP says battery also gets three year warranty support if it's degraded after years of use. Nice. That's good. So yeah, Austin. Yeah. I, like, like I think you could do better in terms of deals, but it's not terrible. Um, yeah, that's basically my summary of that so far, like in quick. Like that's the thing, like the i the i9 13900H is there's nothing about it that's an i9 other than the base clock speed and the all core clock speeds are just a little bit higher than the i7s. But the amount of cores and everything is like way less than the i9 13900HX for example. It's like only tw it's like I think it's like 12 cores, 20 threads or something like that for the i9 13900H where the i9 13900HX is like 24 core 32 thread which is a huge difference um so if you can go like going with the hx series i9 is really where you want to pay like i'd be willing to pay way more for the hx series i9 than the h series i9 because it yeah it's almost no difference between an i7 13700h and an i9 13900h okay uh, Wasim says, why is it that the RTX 4060 is rated at maximum 130 watts, yet I've never seen it go past 100 watts? Uh, it goes past 100 watts in Time Spy, but usually only like up to 105. In a game like this, we are very CPU bound, okay? Only 84% only GPU utilization. You really got to pay close attention to the GPU utilization. Um, that said, uh, the reason is simply because we're going to go start a benchmark run here. The reason is because the amount of CUDA cores that this has in it, and it's a four nanometer process, it just doesn't need more wattage. The, you know, the RTX 3060, 3070, 3080, uh, and the TI variants, those were on eight nanometer core processes, and the new RTX 4000 series on a four nanometer core process, half the size uh, for a nanometer, at least, the half the amount of nanometers, um, it's much more power efficient. And so it just doesn't need that much wattage. And NVIDIA just said artificially these are 140 watts, even though they're not really 140 watts. You'll never see any 4060, 4070, or 4050 pull 140 watts um, just because they're so much more power efficient. And that's how they're going to make the next generation 4070 Ti um, that much more powerful. 4060 Ti might actually come out this time. We'll see. Uh, 4050 Ti, all the Ti versions will just have more CUDA cores and actually pull 140 watts. So we got 85 FPS on average, 36 for our 1% lows. This is very good. Um, overall, our, our, we're not hardly stuttering at all. I, I think that's largely due to the rise in CPU. Um, you know, the Zen 4 CPU, it's got a nice cache amount. We got a lot of NPCs in here. We have low textures. We're not running into our VRAM limitations. We're getting these occasional stutters here. Obviously, the best way to boost FPS in this game is simply disabling ray tracing. So swap and ray tracing off. you'll see a nice FPS boost up to 126 FPS now. And our 1% low is also better as well. So uh, yeah, 
if very good FPS in Hogwarts, very high FPS gaming uh, is possible with a 4060 at 1920 by 1200. All right, so moving on to our next game, Dead Space. Wait, Ada Lovelace is five nanometer? I thought it was four nanometer. Oh, it's just marketing BS? Interesting. Desktop 4060s only limited to 115 watts. Interesting, that's also very low for a desktop. Very power efficient for a desktop. Because desktops usually just like crank. They literally just like crank the wattage to be super high. Um, and, and now we're just getting to the point where there's no real advantage to them doing that. Um, and yeah, my prediction is that next gen Next gen NVIDIA GPUs are just going to have a core count boost. Probably the RTX 5000 series is where we're going to see a, a serious CUDA core boost. And then it'll need to have more wattage like the RTX 4080 and 4090 variants uh, or 4080, 4090 GPUs do. And, uh, and then we'll be pushing those high power limits again in GPUs. Nanometers don't really mean much anymore. I still think it does, but it's not it's not as as important as it used to be. So, like I think the way that and the way the the tep, the way companies have designed their you know their chip architectures uh, has really shown that there are ways to improve efficiencies uh, in the CPU and GPU without having to go to a smaller arc, uh, nanometer like the way Intel has really made their CPUs work quite well at only 10 nanometer um, to compete with, you know, Ryzen chips that are at four nanometer. So yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it's pretty mind blowing actually to me. Um, Cause it used to make such a huge difference every time they would drop the nanometer size by two nanometers. And now it's just getting to the point of diminishing returns, I guess, I think. Uh, until we maybe have another technological breakthrough. I'm not sure when that'll come through, but um, technology usually runs into these like walls of diminishing returns. Um, so, and I, and I am not like a technical super expert on all this stuff either. So I could, I can still grow in my knowledge. Have I ever visited an Asian country? Yes, I've been to Japan uh, and the Philippines. Uh, right as COVID was coming, right as COVID was starting, like the week COVID was starting, I was in the Philippines and it was like super nerve wracking. And I, I might've been one of the first Americans to catch COVID because uh, the person next to me on the plane was just coughing and hacking. Like they had a really bad COVID infection basically. And then I started having COVID like symptoms. Um, like immediately the week, like right out, like about three days after the flight, I started having strong COVID symptoms. That's a pretty fast turnaround for COVID. COVID usually doesn't infect that quickly, but, but yeah, I, had, I wasn't a severe case either way. I've had COVID. If that was COVID, then I've had COVID uh, at least twice, but yeah, I visited Japan for a week and the Philippines for two weeks. It was awesome. Uh, I, I really enjoyed both countries. Um, and I plan on going to a lot more uh, Asian countries as well. So here we are, 1920 by 1200. We are rocking that CPU temperature up to 91.8 degrees, 62 watts on that CPU, 79 watts of power going to that GPU. We are pretty much GPU bound, though we are really slamming that CPU hard. Uh, 86 FPS, 34 for our 1% low. Very typical frame time graph with a lot of little judders going on. Um, let's just experiment real quick in custom mode. CPU platform peak power. Uh, well, let's do our long power limit. Let's just bring it down to, let's just try. 
Let's try 40. We'll just lower these CPU power limits temporarily down lower. All right, let's see what our FPS looks like now. All right. And let's see what our temperatures look like as well. So we're down to the 45 watt limit here. Our FPS is almost the same. 86, 41. But our temps, our temps are much better. We've dropped over 10 degrees by doing that. Well, at the same time, our performance appears to be nearly identical. So, so yeah, if I were to optimize this laptop for dead space, I would try to keep this thing capped at 45 watts. This is one of those special case games that you can test that just really has... Really, uh, this, this game really slams the CPU and really wants just a ton of CPU juice. It will suck up that CPU power, even if it doesn't need it. Um, and, and in many ways, it may even, you know, it kind of basically overruns the system to a, a higher degree that's kind of unnecessary. Uh, okay. Okay. LSP says, for Japan, have you been to Akihabara? There are a lot of electronic stores aside from anime stuff. You can see old hardware stores down there, uh, down to CRT monitors and Windows 98 desktop PCs. Uh, yeah, I went to Akihabara. We went to a uh, hedgehog and owl cafe. <laughs> and we, even to, we went to a maid cafe, too. That was an interesting experience. We went with uh, Carla and... Uh, <laughs> we went with Carla and her parents... While we were there, and her sister too, it was super interesting. Like, you get your own personal maid to attend just your table only. And you can even request her to sing certain songs. And then you give her a tip depending on what you ask her to do. Uh, and you talk with her. You can. There was people there at the maid cafe where they were just one-on-one -on -one hanging out with the maid. Like, to be like friends with them, I think. And they might be regular, so they go there all the time or like every week or something. Um, and then you just order food and drinks uh, and a lot of desserts. It was very interesting. It was a cool experience. Uh, if you're into like karaoke type things, they kind of do like certain songs. They have like dances memorized and everything. It's interesting. You do group music requests. It's, it, it's interesting. <laughs> But yeah, we, st we stayed in uh, Shinjuku when we were there in Japan, and then um, which is like kind of like a lot of the bars and clubs and stuff like that. Uh, went to the robot restaurant before it shut down. Anyway, let's get back to the benchmarking. I can talk about Japan a lot. I'm a huge fan of anime and J Japan and everything. So 92 FPS, 42 for a 1% low. That's excellent. That's very good. And now we're getting temps in the high 70s. For our CPU, uh, low 70s for our GPU. That's also excellent. Um, for a 4060, this is about as good as it gets at 1920 by 1200. I don't think we've really seen a 4060 benchmark higher than this, maybe. Uh, but this is very good. Very good performance. All right, so moving on to our next game, Last of Us Part 1. Here we go. Yeah, the, uh, when we were in Japan, let's see here. When we were in Japan, what was my favorite thing? We went to, uh, we went to this VR arcade in Japan that uh, let us do Mario Kart VR, and they had, like, a cart you sit in. And... Uh, it had like hand controls, so you would actually like raise your hand when you uh, caught an item. You'd throw it with your hand, basically. Um, DLSS on quality. Borderless Windows, the only option. Can't do full screen. Graphics, we're going to go to Ultra Preset, except for textures. 
which we are going to set the textures down to medium. This is going to be with shaders. Uh, this is going to be with the pre uh, the preset shaders not fully rendered, even though I did let them render. You can see that they're at 75 and 36 percent. They take a long time to render. That's the thing. So. Um, so yeah, just know that the, the shaders are not fully rendered. Usually my experience is that it just takes a lot longer to load the map, but performance is still good. Um, this laptop has very high fan noise. Uh, well, it all depends on how you tune it. If you tune it to have a lower fan noise in balanced or performance or in custom, you can tune this thing to have low fan noise for sure. All right, so here we are. Let's see what we get. We are at 91 FPS, 70, 79, 77 for a 1% low. Very tight frame time graph in this cinematic, preloaded cinematic. I like to do this one because it's very consistent from laptop to laptop. And uh, we will uh, see what we get here initially in the first half of this, and then we'll switch it into balanced mode. Uh, and I'll turn the speakers up to max and we'll see how well we can hear the in-game audio and I'll turn the mic and everything over towards the laptop. It's interesting, we're just, we're just hitting 80 watts of power to the GPU. Even though we're GPU bound, 45 watts to the CPU, I wish this GPU would boost higher. Um, I'm pretty sure we would get a little bit higher FPS. That's it. I mean, we're getting good FPS. 98 FPS right now with 80 for a 1% low. It's very good. Let's go ahead and switch it over to uh, balanced mode. All right, balanced mode. That'll adjust our fan noise down quite a lot. We're going to turn speakers up to max. And I'm going to position the mic just right next to the camera, right in front of the laptop. Here we go. Ha-ha. Where did you get the money for this? Drugs. I sell hardcore drugs. Oh, good. You started helping out with the mortgage, then. Yeah, you wish. I love the banter in this, this game. Such a well-written game. Beautiful storytelling. So I would say I can hear the in-game audio pretty good, um, but it's not super loud. It's not super immersive. Uh, laptops with better speakers will definitely have more immersion to them. And I can hear the fans, but they're not as drastic anymore. Uh, and I can definitely hear the game audio over the fan noise. All right, so I've refreshed our benchmark number now that we're in game. Let's go ahead and see what we get as we wander through the world. Dad? Keep in mind, we are on lower fan noise in balanced mode. You could make the fans even quieter if you wanted in quiet mode. And we can demonstrate quiet mode here as well. Let's go ahead and do that. Quiet mode, engage. Now the fans are gonna be super quiet. And we'll Daddy? see if we can get above 60 FPS here. You in here? Seem to be 
somehow connected to the nationwide pandemic. Where the pandemic. heck are you? We've received reports that victims afflicted with the infection show signs of increased aggression. It's nice to see the CPU doing 80, uh, 18, 19 watts. That's enough wattage to give us good CPU performance. This laptop is doing great in quiet mode. 90 FPS, 57 for our 1% lows. And now the fans are extremely quiet. Our temps are also excellent. 70 degrees on the GPU, 64 on the CPU. There's his phone. We'll just pop down here for this segment and then we'll move on to the next game. Here you are. Sir, are you okay? Yeah. Does anyone come in here? No, who would come in here? Don't go near the doors. Just just stand back there. Dad, you're kind of freaking me out. What's going on? It's the Coopers. Some ain't right with them. I, th I think they're sick. I'm kind of sick. <gasps> Jeez. Jimmy! Dad! Come here, come here. Come here. Yeah. Jimmy! Okay, so very good performance, even in quiet mode, it's doing really well. Um, and like, I could feel myself getting immersed in the story. I could hear the audio um, quite well. So I, I think that uh, if you're someone who is fan noise sensitive, the Lock 16 um, is going to be good. I think the vast majority of Ryzen RTX 4050, 4060, 4070s are excellent for fan noise and low wattage pulls. Both the RTX 4050, 4060, 4070 do quite well as long as they're getting 60 watts or more. And then the CPU needs to get like 15 to 20 watts with Ryzen chips. And it's that's enough for the Ryzen chip to do pretty well usually. Where Intel chips sometimes need a bit more wattage to get high levels, uh, high enough levels to get good, clean FPS. So I would say it's an advantage if you want a quieter system to grab Ryzen right now. High quality ray tracing. DLSS on quality, frame generation on. We're going to save and restart. Wasim says, uh, do you recommend cooling pads for every gaming laptop to increase performance or at least keep it the same performance for many hours of gaming? Quiet mode is excellent actually in this laptop. Um, yeah, so for laptop cooling pads, I honestly don't think that you need them in a lot of gaming laptops. I personally don't regularly use a cooling pad at all. But especially if you're going to go with an RTX 4080 or 4090 laptop, those laptops pull way higher wattage. Um, and uh, therefore, the benefits that a cooling pad can bring is way more than a RTX 4050, 4060, 4070 because you're pulling just like way more wattage. Um, like literally maybe almost double the wattage in some games with an RTX 4050 or 4080 and 4090. Um, and therefore it needs a lot more cooling and more airflow. And uh, yeah, so you're gonna get more benefit from the higher end and the higher end laptops than you will in the lower end laptops. Uh, that said, just in general, lowering your temps on your system can help, uh, you know, uh, so there's two, I think there's two huge advantages to the cooling pad. If you get like something like the IATS GT500, that thing prevents dust from going inside your laptop, which is awesome because almost all laptops get just coated in dust and pet dander and stuff like that. Um, and having, having a laptop cooling pad that has an air filter in the back for all the air going into the laptop really helps prevent and catch that dust. Um, and that's honestly one of the biggest advantages. 
And then of course, just lowering your temps in general helps prevent CPU, GPU degradation. That said, I mean, if you're only planning to keep your laptop for two to four years, like typically I will upgrade my laptop every two years usually, um, maybe every year, it depends. But if you upgrade your laptop every two years, four years, I almost never have a laptop go bad on me in that time period. Um, and uh, yeah, that said, if you're planning on keeping your laptop more like five to seven years, like most, I think, uh, laptop owners do plan on keeping it for a longer period. In that scenario, I think a laptop cooling pad will help the system more likely survive without having faults. Think about it like this, like if the fans are on auto fans, then they don't need to ramp the fans as often. And therefore the fan motors are less likely to go out. They're running at lower RPMs. The temperatures on the CPU and GPU are probably a little bit lower and therefore less likely to go out, even in large GX 40, 50, 40, 60, 40, 70 laptops. Now we got 108 FPS on average. Our temperatures were good, I believe, but our GPU temp is a bit spicy. Not too spicy, still below 80. Um, but we did also have a high GPU wattage pull. You see that? We're getting close to the 100 or over 100 watts being pulled without overclocking. Um, overall, very good performance in Dying Light 2. No problems at all running that game with this system. We're moving into Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate 3 being basically a do-whatever-you-want RPG that's turn-based, very intricately designed, and extremely detailed. Um, if you're okay with turn-based combat, this game is probably going to win Game of the Year, if I'm being honest. Uh, maybe Starfield will take it from it when that thing comes out. It's going to be hard to predict, but this will at least be nominated for Game of the Year and get a lot of awards because of excellent storytelling, excellent gameplay, incredibly complex um, player character customization and flexibility. Um, and just the way they designed everything is just simply superb. Um, so, yeah. Let me make sure. Did we, did we, oh, we never did. Let's raise these up back to max again. We lowered those in, um, can't remember what game. Okay, so I believe we are doing, I believe we're gonna do this save. I'm tempted to do a more complex battle scene I think it'll be more interesting to do a more complex battle scene. I'm gonna just go in here and die, probably. <laughs> well, at least go in here and do a few actions. I don't think I'll do a full battle scene every time. Um, my favorite thing about Baldur's Gate 3 right now is just player choices are significant. And like you might interact with one NPC and depending on what you pick and depending on whether you roll successfully, you may literally, uh, you may literally have like, I don't know, six different things that can happen or like, m like multiple different character paths that will influence future character choices and events. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead and see if we can do some fighting here. All of this stuff in the way, we're so we just gonna. We're gonna try to see how many guys we can kill. So this is one of the boss guys. Okay. And I'm not an expert on how to use the keyboard and mouse. I've been using a, uh, I've been using a controller to play this game. 
So, oh, wait, let me go ahead and reset our FPS. Our FPS 117 right now. We had a big 1% low stutter. Uh, can I dash? All right, we dashed. And we'll dash over here. Uh, let's go ahead and maul this guy. Boss guys. Pretty strong. I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to shove the boss guy off the cliff edge if I can. Sweet, we killed that guy. And now we're going to try to do this shove. I don't know if I'll have enough strength for it. 130 FPS right now. I haven't shown you the settings we're on. Let's go ahead and review our settings. Uh, so 1920 by 1200 resolution. Full screen. We have triple buffering. Let's disable that. We want, uh, let's just do ultra preset. And... Uh, DLSS on quality. Ultra preset with DLSS on quality. Sweet. All right, so we want to do a shove on this guy. If we can, let's do shove here. We failed. <laughs> oh my guy died. Great. Uh... I guess we'll try to go for a smack. We did three damage. Oh, that's just wonderful. What? This guy... Uh, if I shove him, it's not going to go the right direction. Just come around and attack him. Oh, and we're dying to leaving. Oh, man. We're going to die. All right, so uh, re I've reset the FPS counter. Whenever this... It's interesting. Whenever this thing transfers um whenever this thing moves tr from location to location sometimes we get a stutter uh, 121 fps 73 for a one percent low i feel like it's quite good uh, okay i think he just killed my other guy yep and now it's just shadow heart that's left this is brutal you're about to call reinforcements in and we're about to die Baldur's Gate 3 is an extremely difficult game. You have to really think tactically in it. Uh, and use your wits, not just have an OP character. Like in The Witcher 3, it doesn't really matter what's what's going on with you. You can probably somehow survive and win. But in this game, if you don't do it right perfectly, you're going to die. Or unless you get lucky or you, you plan things just right, you're just going to die. So Baldur's Gate 3... Over 120 FPS right here uh, on ultra settings, DLSS on quality. Excellent for a 4060. Um, no problems at all playing that game on ultra settings. Let's move, in, move into The Witcher 3. Okay. Checking chat. The reason the 4050, 4060, 4070 have voltage limits and can't reach their increased wattages above 110 watts is because they have very small die sizes. Um... That is partially it, and partially the reason why they have such small die sizes is because NVIDIA didn't put very many CUDA cores in them. You know? Um, so, and they're, these CUDA cores are running at, like, highest possible clock speeds, and then they become unstable, unstable if they go too high, obviously, right? So, um... So, you got to think about it from a perspective of like, well, if there's too many CUDA cores, uh, or if there's if there's enough CUDA cores, they can then they can increase the die size. If you know, but the thing is, Nvidia was like, well, we can get good enough performance if we make the die size this big and with this many CUDA cores. Uh, and then they were like, oh well, we're gonna say it's 140 watts, but it's not really because it doesn't actually need to go that high a wattage. Um, yeah, the workloads basically never have it go that high, basically. 
All right, graphics, ray tracing ultra. Yes, DLSS on quality, display, frame generation is enabled. 1920 by 1200 resolution. All right. Let's go. Here we go. All right. So our our GPU hitting 90 watts of power. Very uh, good wattage pull. Basically, GPU cap 2460. G good good GPU boost clocks. Um, and uh, our RAM is not being hit. Our VRAM is not being hit. Our CPU is doing 39 watts of power, even though it could do theoretically more. Um, 72 degrees, 73 degrees on the CPU. Great GPU and GPU temps in this game. Let's do our benchmark. Um, I'll show you what the FPS is, looks like if you run it with uh, your, if you run it with your um, ray tracing disabled, you'll get much better FPS. But we're doing everything maxed here initially. Um, but I would recommend playing this game with ray tracing disabled. So 81 FPS right now. 63 for our 1% low. Very playable. Very good FPS. Very good frame time graph. Uh, there we go. So 81 FPS. 64 for our 1% low. Excellent temps. Excellent performance. Let's just pop in here. Go in here, turn off ray tracing. This game's probably gonna have to load in again. All right, now we're doing 137 FPS, 117 for a 1% low. Truly excellent, smooth gameplay in The Witcher 3. And this is how the game was originally designed to be played because um, the ray tracing was kind of added in after the fact. Um, yeah, really great gameplay. Love The Witcher 3, highly recommend this game. And it plays great on this system. All right, so very excellent. Let's go ahead and move into our summary of everything we've found out about the laptop. Okay. Okay, sweet. So, uh, comparing this against the competition, uh, on a daily deals perspective, this is a good deal. RTX 4060 with a Ryzen 7 7840HS CPU, 8 core, 16 thread, Zen 4, uh, Zen 4 architecture CPU. We got great performance in every game we played. We were getting over 100 FPS in Warzone 2, mostly uh, like 95 to 120, depending on the area. Um, that said, this thing has some weaknesses. Let's talk through the weaknesses and let's talk about everything here. So uh, some of the drawbacks of this laptop, certainly a plastic chassis through and through, no metal top lid, a uh, plastic touchpad, um, very, it's not, cheap feeling but very budget feeling system overall um another drawback to this system clearly is the display quality that's probably the next major drawback uh only around 69 percent srgb is pretty low color gamut for a gaming laptop that said the display brightness being 312 nits as measured by my spider 5 elite was above average for less than $1,000. And display brightness in some ways is more important than color gamut, but I think both are very important. And I think some people are gonna miss not having 100% sRGB display. Um, that said, if you're not particularly very picky about your color gamut on your display, you'll probably still be all right with the, the lock 16. Um, you'll still be able to enjoy your games and play them. There's very little ghosting on the display. 144 Hertz, 1920 by 1200 resolution is still uh, a good resolution, in my opinion, for a 16-inch display. Um, 
Let's go ahead and just go through every checkpoint now. So those are the those are the major drawbacks of the system. And of course, when you're comparing this against the competition, there's just some better deals, I think, at the thousand dollar price point. Um, and so that that to me makes this thing like if you're looking for the absolute best deal ever, this is not it at nine, $985. It's still a very good deal, I think, at $985. Very good deal. Uh, perhaps an excellent deal at $985. You're getting so much value. You're going to get just phenomenal 1920 by 1200 gaming performance at uh, at $985. But there are some other laptops that I can certainly recommend over this one r right now, at least temporarily. But it, I would exp like given the fact that these other laptops have gone on sale to such a great price, I'm anticipating that we'll see this thing go down in price to like say uh, $899. I'm anticipating this thing will go down to $899 eventually. Like before the end of the year, I'll bet you this will be on sale at some point with a coupon code combination for less than $900. Um, right now at $985, very good deal though. Okay, going down the list. Unboxing the laptop, very basic laptop uh, system. This thing uh, does not have a complex unboxing it's not very fancy, whatever. It's a budget system. That's no big deal. Um, it, it, I could, it could be packaged a little better as well. Uh, the power adapter, 230 watts, a medium size, not small size, uh, could be a little bit more portable. You can use USB-C power adapting charging though, up to 140 watts. Uh, if you use a Lenovo USB-C charger, that's going to get you a lot of performance in games even, I believe. I believe it should get you a lot of performance even in games. Um, quality control on this laptop is pretty good. We had no issues overall. The bigger issue is flex. I feel like this is a little bit more flexy than the Legion Pro 5 and Legion Pro 7i and the Slim 5. Um, and given the fact that it doesn't have any metal parts to it, also makes it feel a little bit cheaper than those systems. Um, the hinge also felt a little bit more wobbly than those systems. This has a, not quite as firm a hinge, but it's not bad. Like it, it is hard to move it. It's not easy to move this hinge. It's just, it's got a bit of a wobble to it. Um, not not severe or anything uh, like that. Now, the taking the laptop apart is a little bit more complicated as well because you have extra screws. You gotta take this back piece off right here. This back uh, black back piece needs to be removed. Uh, so there's extra steps to, to taking that off, but it wasn't hard to do. It was very easy and quick. Um, upgradability, you got two M.2 slots, two sodium slots, very easy to upgrade overall. A webcam quality was like, uh, I believe it gave it a seven out of 10, slightly above average, pretty decent details on like the Lumix camera logo and details in my beard. Uh, so decent resolution for the price. Uh, the keyboard is a phenomenal layout. It feels really good to type on. It's got a bright white backlight, not multicolored, not RGB, but you can turn it off if you need to. Uh, this laptop looks very professional in that sense. There's very little to make it gamery, except maybe the blue uh, things right here at the back. Uh, they do not light up, uh, as far as I know. They do not light up. Um, but yeah, they are just your basic. Um, you're pretty much a, a very basic looking laptop that'll be very college or business friendly, in my opinion. Um, the mouse is a plastic touchpad. It is not a very high-end touchpad. If you're looking for a glass touchpad, there are Asus laptops, uh, some Acer laptops that have glass touchpads around this price. That said, most laptops under $1,000 do not have glass. Most of those are plastic, so it fits. It's a, it's a nice touchpad for a plastic one, though. Um, the, uh, the keyboard layout, I will say, also is very good keyboard layout with a nice number pad sizing and a uh, nice row functionality with easy to turn off the secondary functions and use the secondary functions. Um, the L Lenovo Vantage software is very good, very easy to use. It updates well, and I've not had any problems with it. Uh, we're easily able to control the laptop really, really well. Um, the speakers on this, very m mediocre, very average. I gave them, I think, a 7.0 out of 10. They're just not super loud. They're not super vibrant, uh, not super bassy, but they're basic and they'll work. Um, they got at a reasonable volume, enough for us to hear the games, uh, when we, especially when we turn the fan noise down. And speaking of fan noise, we got 
Uh, excellent gaming performance in quiet mode, balanced mode, and both of those are fairly quiet. 43 decibels in quiet mode, 47.5 decibels in balanced mode, 52.5 decibels in performance mode, and 56 and a half decibels in max fan mode. So there's a wide range of fan noise. If you're okay, you wanna use headphones, you can go for that maximum performance and lowest temperatures, or you can go for that balanced mode or quiet mode and still have good enough performance, especially considering this is only 1920 by 1200 resolution. Cinemage R23, we were pushing 17,500 in our best tests, uh, a little bit less than that in our mediocre tests. We hit 100 degrees Celsius in CPU-only workloads pulling 91 watts of power, which is a lot of wattage for uh, a system like this. So it's understandable that the CPU gets that hot. We reduced the wattage down to 65 watts and we got uh, very good performance still. I believe 16 and a half thousand in Cinemetch R23. So we, we didn't lose too much performance even at 65 watts. I think we even broke 17,000 in one of the tests at 65 watts. So very good performance, especially for under a thousand dollars. This is some of the best CPU performance you can get for less than $1,000. So if you're after a, a laptop that has an excellent CPU, this one's pretty good. The display though, again, is one of the weaknesses. Oh, I didn't talk about display, but I did talk about it earlier. Display is clearly one of the weaknesses. Display color gamut is lower than I think what a lot of gamers want. A lot of gamers want 100% sRGB. So that's clearly one of the weaknesses here and one of the trade-offs that you're giving up when you go for this system. Um, okay. Apex Legends was excellent performance. It felt really good to play this. There's uh, very little to no ghosting at all on this display. And I'm a very competitive player. I love playing esports games. And this is gonna be great for an esports gamer. That said, a 240 hertz, 360 hertz display is still better, of course, for esports gaming. If you are an esports player, I do recommend the Aorus 7 with a 360 hertz display um, over this one. So a little bit more money, but you do get that juicy 360 hertz display if you're after just straight as many FPS and as responsive of a display as possible. That said, there are 240 hertz display options as well if you go for a little bit more money. Um, Warzone 2 was good gameplay, 90 to 125 FPS. CSGO, 387 FPS, God of War, 67 FPS, Cyberpunk 2077, 84 FPS, Hogwarts, I believe that was 84 FPS as well with reasonable 1% lows at like 34 or something like that. Dead Space, I believe 91 FPS, Last of Us Part 1, varied a lot depending on which fan noise setting we were in, but even in quiet mode, we were getting six, like I think it was 75 to 90 FPS um, in quiet mode. And in performance, in even higher, depending on the performance mode we were in. Um, obviously those were beginning areas of the game too. Dying Light 2, uh, I believe it was 108 FPS. Excellent. Baldur's Gate 3, ultra settings with DLSS on quality, 125 to 130 FPS. Witcher 3, um, I believe we were in the 80s FPS range, but when we turned off ray tracing, it went up to the 130, 140 range. So overall, gaming on this is excellent. My primary, my primary, uh, flaws with this machine is the color gamut on the display it being that you can just get laptops for under a thousand that have similar performance that have better color gamut but just about everything else on this laptop is pretty dang good um oh ports ports is another area of weakness on this machine there's no thunderbolt 4 support there is uh only four total usbs and one of those a usb 2.0 no uh, mini display port, though there is display port 1.4 support on the USB-C. So the USB-C can be used for a lot of things from um, power delivery to display output to a docking station. So there's a lot of flexibility this laptop has, but there are laptops that definitely have better ports out there as well compared to this. Now, battery life. We've got a Ryzen uh, 7 chip in here with Zen 4 architecture, that's gonna provide excellent battery life, especially if you optimize the laptop well and make sure the NVIDIA GPU is turned off in uh, integrated GPU only mode in the Lenovo Vantage software. 
Um, so if you can, if you do that, I'm expecting six to eight hours of web browsing under typical pretty heavy web browsing usage. Uh, if you optimize really well, maybe eight to 10 hours, um, maybe even more if you optimize really, really well, but around that range should be possible with this hardware. Um, and of course in idle mode, given it's a Ryzen chip with low screen brightness and airplane mode and everything, just taking notes, you could go probably well over 12 hours, I would imagine with this system. That said, it's only a 60 watt hour battery, so maybe I'm overestimating a little bit here, maybe tone those down just a little bit, but super optimized, yeah, at least seven to nine, I guess, with web browsing, if you optimize fairly well. Um, okay, so let me go ahead and answer some questions. That's my summary review of the Lenovo Lock 16. Um, tell us what is the better laptop for $1,000? Great question, Wasim. Okay, so I, I went over all of the laptops I would recommend uh, for under $1,000. Currently, the number one laptop is the Asus Tough F15 RTX 4070 with 100% sRGB display for $999. It's on sale, just started this morning. I don't know how long it'll be in sale for, probably not very long. Uh, and then this thing is normally priced at $1,400. Um, and it has gone on sale from anywhere from $1,150 to $1,400 before this. But, uh, but yeah, very, very good price at $999. Absolutely insane. If you want a better display quality, you also have the Asus Tough A16. This has 100% uh, sRGB, but it's a weaker GPU with the Radeon RX 7600S. Uh, so that's kind of your trade-off here, an all AMD system, but this one's currently only $799. So another great alternative. And these are the reasons why I'm thinking the Lenovo Lock 16, it's a good deal at $985. But if we're seeing deals like this, I'm expecting, uh, like I'm honestly expecting this laptop to eventually go on sale for under $900. So that's why I'm, that's why I'm saying like it's on sale now for $985. Uh, normally, this would probably cost like 1100 but I will not be surprised if we see under 900 before Black Friday, maybe even under 800 on Black Friday for this laptop uh, configuration. We'll see. It's hard to say how low these prices will go, but right now people are just really selling their laptops on sale um, for great sales. Another great option if you can spend more money, Acer Nitro 16 with the RTX 4070 with a QHD 165 Hertz 500 nits display. This is uh, one of the best display qualities for only 1249. Um, very, very good. You also have the Legion Pro 5. This one's gonna cost quite a bit more, but you do get a QHD display. And of course the Acer Nitro 5 QHD 165 Hertz. I talked about all of these in more detail at the beginning of the live stream in the value comparison. So I don't wanna go over all of them in total detail again, but those are just quickly some of the other laptops to consider besides the Lock 16. Uh, and there's a link to that sheet, that comparison sheet in the description down below if you wanna check out more about all of those laptops. And of course, I would encourage you to like, subscribe, and come back for more detailed live streams. Okay, checking chat. What's the highest FPS you've seen getting on Call of Duty? Uh, i9, um, the i9-13900HX or better CPUs are the highest FPS, and those usually can get uh, 130 to 155 FPS. Um, Lenovo Lock or Legion 5i? Depends on what you need, but if you want better display quality, go with the Legion 5i if you can. Um, uh, let's see here. Is this the same thing as the Lenovo Geek Pro? I don't know. Never heard of the Lenovo Geek Pro. Um, it might be. I, I don't know. This The lock is new. Um, okay. That's it for this live stream. Thanks so much. I'll see you in the next one. Brandon, out. Huzzah.